than you think. It's not a tournament. It's what you don't see on TV. The cash is real. The stakes are high. They bet big. They win big. They lose big. High stakes live action poker. Live at the bike. Watch it live on the web or play it if you dare at the Bicycle Casino right here in Los Angeles. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Live at the Bike, brought to you by the Bicycle Casino in Los Angeles, California, the first and only webcast of real action cash game poker. My name is Bart Nance, and I'm here with David Tuckman. And Dave, tonight is Friday night, which means it is 1020, unrestricted by a no limit hold'em. It's rock and roll poker at its best. I mean, I tell you, 1020, no limit. I tell you every week, I look forward to this day. Uh, I mean, it used to be our biggest game, but now Wednesdays kind of supersedes that because they start that game so early that even though that's a restricted buying game, there's so oh. many chips on the table at well, that I mean, time, it's it's just insanity Right. by the time that anything happens with that game. This but, game, uh, just, some of our, our best moments, obviously, Kenny James moment and so forth, and some of our best moments over the last four or five months have happened on Friday nights. Right. And some of our best games. Right. And of course, this is, uh, I mean, it's an unrestricted buying game, which means that you can buy in for any amount. And, um, you know, it's quite a big game. Now, I'm getting word that there was a lot of traffic here in the area on Friday. It took you two hours to it was get here from hell. Burbank. Hell. Um, and, and Burbank is, just so you guys know, I live about 18 to 20 miles away from this casino, and it took me about an hour and 45 minutes to get here. Yeah. Well, we are going to flip to the table just as soon as our guys in the booth here are doing something technically. Yeah. I can see in the background. And we're going to check out where the game is because I don't think it, it might not have started yet. And if it hasn't started yet, what we're going to do is just stream the table with silence and then come back in when they're going to start there. Yeah, and it'll probably be about five minutes or so. I heard that Ed is in the house now. He just arrived. Mm -hmm. And I know Mo is here and Barry Woods is here. And uh, we'll get a few others soon. So the yeah. game will get going probably within the next five to seven minutes. Okay. So is pretty excited. let's see if we're going to take a look at the table. Yeah, yeah. let's do that. Okay. So, well, here's the table. It looks like there's Barry Woods, Mo. We got four-way action here. So we're going to stream this here, and we're just not going to continue to BS, Dave. Yeah. And well, this, shut up and I, I just want to say one thing real quick. This game, just for a little teaser here, this game is going to be crazy. Tonight's tournament, our whole holding tournament, is a $500 no-limit tournament, which means all the big-time guys are here. And once they get knocked out of the tournament, they're going to enter this game. So this game is going to be crazy tonight, folks. So make sure you come back in five minutes, okay? And we'll see you then. Well, Dave, how about the whole Hold'em hold tournament? Let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, well, the tournament, I just said it, the tournament starts at 7.15 tonight. It's a $500 entry tournament, no limit Hold'em tonight. And uh, really, really exciting because uh, obviously the big-time players are in the house. And when they get knocked out, where are they going to play? They're going to play in this game. Yeah. And that's tonight. Now, tomorrow night's tournament, which is actually pretty cool, Saturday's tournaments always start at 4.15, and tomorrow's the No Limit Hold'em $200 multi-rebuy tournament, but it's got a $100,000 $100, guarantee. Right. And for your entry, everybody who pays their way into the tournament gets their own free poker pads. Oh, really? Yeah, it's kind of cool. Little, uh, uh, it says Bicycle Casino on it? Yeah, a Bicycle Casino poker pad, which is great if you play uh, you know, poker on the internet. Yeah. You can use it to practice shuffling your chips, and obviously it's a mouse pad. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of cool. And that well, starts at 4.15. Well, i gotta be on, I got to tell you also, Dave, you know, Barry Woods gave the whole crew at Live at the Bike a nice Christmas gift. Nice package of wine and uh, gourmet cheeses and crackers. And, of course, Barry Woods being Barry Woods. Yeah, yeah, he's, 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 a, he's a class act. You know what, though? I don't care how much he kisses our ass. There's no way I'm going to say good things about him. I'm sorry. I can't do it. Not the way he plays. No, I'm only razzing him. It was very, very nice of him. Obviously, uh, not necessary, but very nice of him. You know, one of the other funny things here is, that obviously, as these players aren't necessarily professional poker players, Dave, recently, and especially over the last two or three weeks, yeah. people have really become critical and be like, well, how much money really is Ed worth? Because, uh, because uh, of how much money 
that say he loses, you know, during the show. Right. And there he is, right there. I mean, another class act, I must say. Comfortable with whatever he does. He's here to have a good time, yeah. so it's really not an issue. Yeah. People speculating about that amount and all that stuff, it doesn't matter. Well, everybody always wants to see, when, when you see somebody winning or losing 30 or 40 grand, you go, wait a second, wow. That's like, you know, some people don't make that in a whole year. What does this guy do for a living, and how can I do it? Right. And, uh... <laughs> But in the end, hey, as long as he's having a good time, yeah. he's comfortable with it. No he, he looks like he's having a good time. And uh, here we go. We're going to drop. Exactly. Now, the guy in seat nine, he's a big-time tournament player, actually. And uh, his name escapes me. But we'll get it for you in a second. But I've played with him numerous, numerous times. And look at this. The guy here who's coming into the game, Dave, I just played with him in the 30 Hold'em game. Did you? He's going to sit down over there in seat eight. We'll get his name as well. I gotta tell you, you tried to make a move on me, Dave. And, like uh, he was hitting on you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean a move like a bluff? I, you know, the funny thing is, he had this amazingly hot Asian girlfriend. I was jealous. <laughs> His girlfriend came in. It was amazing. Uh, so not only, so, so he took your money, and uh, or did you beat him? I took his money. But okay. I, I might trade. I might have traded the money for the girlfriend. I don't know. <laughs> maybe if we get lucky, you know, maybe we'll see her come into the game. And we're gonna start this thing up right now. Looks like yep. Barry Woods is in the blind. And uh, let's go around and introduce the table. Yeah, we're playing. We're gonna start it off shorthanded here, guys. Seat one, we've got Mo. Seat two, we've got Ed. Before I mentioned Ed, real class act. Seat five, actually, I think he's in seat six. I want to say. Uh, now, seat five is going to be Tony, but he's not here yet. Seat six is Barry. Yeah. There he is. Class act there. Seat eight is Tyler Burse. Okay. Uh, and seat seven, you see that that is, we all know that is uh, Shaheen. Yes, Shaheen, very tight player. Yeah, I actually played with Shaheen uh, last Saturday yeah. for about six hours. Seat nine is Merholm, and he is a big-time tournament player, local professional tournament player. Yeah. And, of course, seat one is Mo. Okay. Yeah. Now, Mo has got ace-king here, and uh, Tyler has pocket sixes. So Tyler made a bet on the flop, and Mo raised it to 300. And, again... Now, the flop is king-9-3, folks. Yeah, king-9-3. So you know. Mo has ace-king. Tyler has pocket sixes. And Tyler's going to make the $300 call, and we've got an $800 pot going to the turn. The turn's a deuce, and Mo is still good with ace-king. Tyler checks. I don't really know what Tyler wants to why to get himself involved here. Yeah, well, you know, it's shorthanded. You can't always yeah. put somebody on, on a pair. Yeah. Um, but you're out of position here, and you can be in, you can be in bad shape here. And Mo's gonna bet. It looks like 400, right? I think he said a thousand. Wow. I think it's a thousand. Thousand dollar bet, huh? Well, I. It's a thousand dollar bet, Dave. Wow. And Tyler's got a lot. Tyler's pretty deep there. I mean, I think he's got at least. I want to say Tyler's got close to three or four thousand dollars at least. Well, again, the board is king nine three deuce. Mo has got ace king and Tyler has pocket sixes and Tyler releases. Yeah. So there you go. And uh, I don't know if you caught that, Dave, beforehand, uh, just before the uh, when Greg was talking about uh, as they were continuing to discuss the hand that happened on Wednesday when Barry. Uh, mucked his hand, which was the winning hand. Right. And Greg himself just said that, oh, the hand's retrievable. Well, according to our rules, it's not yeah, retrievable. It's, We're not going to go into it because I think we killed it to death yesterday. But, uh, but the point of the matter is yeah. the biggest problem is in most casinos is the floor men and the dealers don't always know the real rules. <laughs> right. It reminds me of, of course, my umpiring Dave. St Dave, i got to tell you, you know the person that knows the least amount about baseball rules in a game, Dave? Yeah. The managers. Of course. They don't know the rules at all. <laughs> but, they'll, but they'll argue to death with you, right, about them? Yeah. Now, two people have ace-king here. The 100. And we had a raise here by seat 8 to 100. Again, this game is 10-20. And uh, seat 3 is going to call over here. Two ace-kings. We've got a new player in seat 3. We'll get his name. And here we go to the flop. And that name is Jerry. 5-5 five, five, deuce, and Jerry is out of position. Tyler has ace-king okay. the same hand. It gets checked to him, and he bets 200 here. So what are we going to expect out of Tyler here? He looks like he's pretty aggressive, huh? Well, I mean, he's going to make a continuation bet here with ace-king. Well, why? That's not a bad flop for ace-king, is it? No. And uh, there's the 100. And Tyler quickly calls. Wow. And Tyler, I think, only bet in for 1,000, Dave. Well, so he's, he's, he's pretty committed here. Turns a jack. 
I believe that Tyler has checked again. Oh, excuse me, Jerry has checked again here. Yeah. And Tyler's going to pretty much put them all in. He's going to bet 500 here. Wow. And I don't think that Jerry has much more than that. No, Jerry can only beat, honestly, can only beat Ace Queen. Um, if you try to put somebody on a bluff here, you can only put him on Ace Queen. There he goes. It. He and folds the hand. The power of position, huh? So there it is. Well, of course, you know, we're big fans of Barry Woods because, you know, he's a class act. I think he lost a little bit of control on Wednesday when he was cussing some of the players out. But, uh, uh, you know, kind of a little place for the two plus twoers in their heart about, you know, say, you know, rooting for Barry. Yeah. And I got to tell you, it is official on Tuesday night of next week. I guess you can call it two plus two or nine anybody in the area the lineup is going to be it's going to be a 300 to 500 game barry's going to be playing gus is going to be playing david kelsey is going to be playing supposedly jeff klein the surfer on a line eyed gentleman is going to be playing and another guy from two plus two so there's six seats and there are going to be there's four more open uh, three more wow. so. oh. okay. now we got a hundred dollar raise here I believe it was by seat three, and seat two just limped in there. Ed limped in with Ace King and Dave. I got to think that he's going to pull the limp re-raise here. We've seen him do it before. Yeah, it's not a bad place to do it. Ed has limped in with Ace King, and let's see what he's going to do here. Is he going to re-raise? There it is. He's going to make it 400. And you know, Jerry, he's short. He's going to push the rest in, and he is dominated. Barry gets out of the hand, and Jerry might go bust here in the first two hands that he plays. Ed is a big favorite here against King Jack. And the pot is going to be about 15, oh, 1,400 total here. Yeah, Jerry needs either, you know, some sort of hearts, straight, or, or obviously a jack. Yeah. He's in bad shape here. Probably a three-to-one dog. Yeah. So here we go. It's you and I. About a $1,500, uh, you know, board here. Eight, nine, nine. No real help for Jerry. No, he needs a uh, runner, runner for a straight. Yeah. I mean, he can catch a jack here. That would help him, too, obviously. Turn is a queen. Well, he's Picks got a gut match. shot now. No one's got a club in the rivers of three, and Ed escapes. Ace king is good. And Jerry goes bust just like that, Dave. Just like well, that. Well, you know what? He played ace king pretty passively, and then he played king jack overly strong. And we see that so many times when you, you kind of get outplayed with a big hand like ace king. Right. Because you played it too passively, and then you overplay a weak hand. Yep. And just like that, he loses a thousand dollars. Yep. But I gotta tell you, over there to all seven. in all, most of the regulars that we do get on live at the bike, I'm big fans of. And obviously, us being commentators, we stay objective. You know, and if somebody makes a crap play, they make a crap play, and we're gonna be honest about it. But I am a big fan of most of the people on this show, Mo and Ed and Barry. Well, it looks like Jerry rebought over there in seat four. We can't see his cards here. He's a thousand behind in seat four, and he's gonna call with king five offsuit. Again, we're playing ten twenty no limit hold'em. The brown chips are ten dollar chips, and the white chips are hundred dollar chips. Pod is gonna be limped around here, and we got four way action. A couple limpers and the blinds. Seat nine, we need to see his cards as well. Flop comes out seven four deuce with a couple of diamonds. Now, it's interesting. I think I can see one three in seat nine. But I don't know what else is going on. Well, we're having some little bit of chaos here in the booth. Yeah, a little bit. The technical. turn is a king. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that seat seven has the best hand here with king eight. And he's going to bet it on the button. Yeah, that's, uh, that's Shaheen. That's Shaheen. He bets the king eight. And we never did see seat nine's cards. He's got well, ace three. Ace three. He's there you fold. go. Now, Jerry's got a king also. There we see a king also. Yeah, he's going to make the call. But the eight is going to play. I mean, I, Jerry is in kicker problems here. i got to tell you, Dave, I mean, we know Shaheen. I, I don't see him betting the river here. And the river's a queen. I think this one just is going to go check, check. No, Shaheen's going to bet 200 here. Excuse me. Wow. No. No, excuse me. Jerry bet 200 and Shaheen folded. Wow. Jerry bet 200 on the river and Shaheen folded. I guess Jerry checked calling the turn. Maybe thought to Shaheen that he was on a flush draw. Yeah, well, I mean, you got to look at it this way. They all check the flop, right? And then the turn comes out of king, and you bet into it, and the guy calls you. Right. Now, the only thing is, if the guy didn't have clubs, well, then he probably had a king, and if you had a king, he probably had a king better than king eight. <laughs> How do you know king eight? How do you know eight is actually a good kicker? So I, I can't blame Shaheen for folding that hand. Well, 10-20 vines, limp, limp, limp here. 
So seat nine, again, that's uh, Mac. Uh, Go ahead. Um, Mirham. Mirham. Mirham, and he, obviously, like I said before, he's a local tournament pro. Yep. And he's going to have to learn to put his cards in the window. 9-3 off suit here for him. Yeah, if he doesn't do that, we're going to have to go shoot him. Yeah. <laughs> Ace 4-4 four, four here on the flop. And it doesn't look like anyone hit any part of that. Got checked around. The turn's a 10. He's got five-way action. And still nobody has anything. I mean, I think Jack High is the best hand. Well, Barry's going to bet here. If, if no one wants it, he's going to take it. And it looks like he, unless somebody makes a move, he's probably going to take it down here, Dave. Yeah, and look at this. He did a really, he bet $80 to win a $100 pot. Yeah. And he's going to take it down. Yeah. Nice little bluff. Thank you, Barry. And, uh, of course, if you want to follow a live thread that is started on the Internet, you can go to 2plus2.com, spelled out. Click on forums. World Poker Tour and other televised tournaments. The official Live at the Bike thread for uh, December 9th. Dave. December 9th, the day after John Lennon was uh, shot. Big Beatles fan? Yeah, pretty big Beatles yeah. fan. That's been raised. Now we got a raise here by uh, Tyler. He's going to make it 100. He's got Ace King off suit. He's and taking it down. He's going to take it down. Um, you can also email us at live at the bike .com. Questions? Comments? Suggestions? And uh, I can see that someone uh, emailed us, Dave, a copy of uh, a discussion. This is Ken Prevo with Bob Chiffone about Robert's rules of poker about the other night. But again, the moral of the story is no matter what the rules are in print, I think it's just that poker rules are, are vastly, vastly inconsistent and the enforcement of them are vastly inconsistent, and that yeah. might be part and that's, of the problem. That's the biggest problem is whatever the Bice Casino rules are, whatever your casino, right. whatever your casino you play in, whatever the rules are, they need to stay consistent, and all the dealers and the floor men there right. need to know what they are right. and right. enforce them the same way. Right. This pot got uh, limped around here, and it's between the blinds, and I guess they're not going to chop. And Barry's got an ace, so we're heads up blind play here, Dave. I mean, the small blind completed with 9-3 off suit, and Barry's going to race with ace-5. i, I got to be honest with you. I low, Like I said, I don't chop in no limit. Right. I never do right. when I play, but I have no problem throwing away. If I'm in the small blind with 9-3 right. off suit, throw it away. Right. I want to play 9-3 off suit out of position. No. I think that seat 5 is actually locked up for Tony, Dave. So that, that Tony, uh, prop Tony? No, no, no. Uh, uh, you know, the gentleman that plays a lot of Mexican poker. Oh, okay. Great. No matter what he does, he's still a winner. Oh, yeah. Like I said, in our tournament tonight, our Ho Ho Holding tournament starts at 715, so we might get a couple of players playing it now, and then they might leave for an hour or two, and then come back when they get knocked out. Right. Okay. They told me the same thing. And we got a limp here, and Shaheen's going to raise with the ace jack. He's going to make it 80 to go. Yeah, he's every night, not every night, every Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. And Shaheen has ace jack off suit, not ace king. So Barry's going to make the call here with jack nine, so Barry is dominated. Yeah, he's in bad shape here. And here we go to the flop, king. 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, and it's not quite as good as it looks here because Shaheen actually has ace jack, but he's going to bet it he's anyway. He's going to bet and he's going to take it down. Good continuation there go. bet there from Shaheen. Yep. Uh, bear with us today, actually. Our producer, Evelyn, who normally does the uh, the manual punching in of the cards, she's on vacation. She's taking a couple days off. And uh, we have the wonderful fill in here of Garo. And uh, obviously, he's taught Evelyn all he knows. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> the button moves over here to seat but, six. But trust me, it is not as easy as no. it looks. It is one of the most difficult jobs. Absolutely. To punch in, you know. 12 or 16 cards. We've been looking for somebody to do that on a permanent basis for the last year. Because oh. Evelyn's the producer of the show. We'd like her to have other things to do while the show's going on. And we just can't get anybody to do it. We bring in somebody. Yeah, and, they yeah. like, <laughs> and they do it for like three days and they go, no, I don't want to do it anymore. Right. Never again. Right. <laughs> now we got a raise here. It looks like by Mo. Pocket sixes. He made it 140, Dave. So like, you know, seven times the big line. He got a call from Jerry with King Queen off suit in seat three. And that is a hand that is easily dominated, and we are heads up. Now, I mean, he's, Jerry's in okay shape here, but how does he know it? Yeah. So here we go to the flop. Pot's about $300. Ooh, ace, ace, king. Let's see how Mo plays this. 
Oh, he's going to make a bet. He's going to throw one little bet in there and see where he's at. He bets 220. And I got to tell you, once again, we hate to be critical of people, but in terms of play, if I'm watching somebody's play here, Jerry looks like the weak link, doesn't he? Just in the first I, I can't imagine that he's going to get away from this hand, though. No, no, I don't think so either. Right. But just calling a big, I mean, what was it, $160 raise with King Queen offsuit? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, once he calls here, I think Mo just shuts down. Oh, uh, obviously, course. unless a six falls off, right? Yeah. Uh, and it's just. 600. And, and, and Jerry's going to raise here, yeah. and I think Mo's obviously going to be done with it. I mean, Jerry doesn't have much more left, but there's no way. Moe's not doesn't have odds to try to spike a set here on the turn. It's just, no, he doesn't. Yeah, he's going to fold. So there you go. The only, the only thing I'm wondering is, now, Mo bet, the raise is 160, right? Yep. The pot's about 330 or so, and I think Mo bet about 325 on the, on the flop, right? Right. Could he have obtained that same information by betting less? What do you think? I mean, I'm not saying the bet's wrong. He bet the pot, which is fine. Yeah, that might be one of those times where you bet half pot. I mean, what is the guy going to call you with ex there? Right. Exactly. Right. I mean, if I bet, you know, if I bet 225, am I going to get the same information? I'm just wondering if Mo could have saved money there. And obviously, I'm playing devil's advocate. Obviously, we're privy to the hands. It's real easy for us back here. But Ed's going to limp in here. Six, nine of spades. It looks like Tyler over there in the small blinds got pocket nines. Tyler Durden there? Yeah. And he's going to raise it up to 100. Macram's got 8 5. He's going to fold. And we know that Ed will come. Of course, he's going to come in. And Ed actually hasn't bought in that for that much. I mean, he might have, what, say, maybe 5,000 in front of him, Dave? Yeah, Not yeah. That much. He's, got, he's got okay there. But you know what? Tyler's got a lot of money, so. Flop comes out ace, deuce, three. This is interesting. Let's see if. Uh, Tyler bets 200. A little continuation bet and there. And Ed's probably going to be done with his hand, I would imagine. Unless he thinks Tyler's got a pocket pair and he wants to make a move on him. Ooh. Tyler, what's the number one rule of Fight Club? Ned's going to fold. So I guess Ed's, Tyler's probably here to play the tournament as well. Yeah, I'd imagine so. And uh, again, he's going to fold. And again, what, just what an amazing girlfriend. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't seen her yet. <laughs> I gotta be honest with you, you know, Barry Woods, he wrote, he, he gave a Christmas card to each, each of us, yeah, right. to each of us, and they were all personalized, and he said, Bart, I can't get you a hot Asian chick for Christmas, so I'm gonna get you a hot Asian Christmas card, and it was a Japanese Christmas card. Yeah, actually in so Japanese writing, right? Right, right. Phenomenal. <laughs> we got a straddle here by Ed C2, he's gonna show his cards over there. Jerry's going to fold. Ed has got, looks like Jack Deuce off suit over there. It doesn't look like anyone really has much of anything. Moe's got a Deuce 5 suited. He's going to limp in. Yeah, you have an go. And Ed's going to check. So here we go. Ace, three, queen. Kind of a passive table to start off here, huh? Check, check here on the turn. I need four. And Moe's not lying. He needs a four. The river's a three. And Mo just mocks. Yeah, he yeah. figures five high can't possibly win. Again, and you wonder, well, why doesn't Mo try to, you know, outplay Ed there? Well, there are other times to outplay Ed, and it's an interesting thing. You know, we learn all kinds of different things about this table, or about this game from this show, Dave. Mo's the host of the game. Wouldn't you really want to be as nice as possible to Ed? Like, I would chop with Ed if I was the host of the game. I mean, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, of course you're going to do yeah. it. And also, it's a matter of picking your spots. I mean, think of right. the pot is like $40. Right, right. You know, you're looking at it going, you know what? If I hit, I hit. I don't. Okay, take it. I'm not going to. Right, right. <laughs> You know, Ed's not going anywhere. I can get my money later. Barry Woods is looking snazzy tonight. I like the shirt. He's got eight, seven of diamonds. He's going to raise up to 100. The pre-flop raising has been pretty big tonight so far. And look at this, Ed's going to call it ace three off Now, most, we're seeing most flops heads up, which is traditional no-limit hold'em. And Barry's got top pair here, but Ed has a piece of it, Dave. And look at this, Ed comes out and bets 200. And Barry's going to raise it up to 400. i got to tell you, and Ed might lose a lot here. You'd think, well, how do you lose a lot here with ace three? He might. Turns a nine. He called. How do you call that, first of all? Well, he made a bet, and Barry raised, and he called. 
I mean, I, I don't mind the bet by Ed because you put Barry on big cards. You figure your pair of threes is good, so I like the bet. But when Barry raises you, you got to release it then, don't you? I think Barry might be might be uh, fearful that Ed might have him out kicked. And the river's a floor, but Barry has the best hand here, and Ed's going to come out and fire. Barry's and not gonna... Barry folds quickly. Oh, my God. Quickly folds. He Cold got crushes. Barry folds out of the pot. I mean, Mark, Mark I mean, just staked out in time. Ed usually doesn't show that type of strength. Wait a second, though. It, it's, okay, 6.21 p.m. Pacific time, folks. On December 9th, 2005. Barry, Barry folded top pair. Barry Woods. Well, there was a nine out there, but Barry Woods oh, right. was bluffed out right. of a hand. Right. There we go. And now he's picked up aces, Dave. And we know that he, oh, he's not going to let that one go. That's why I I mean, you know, he did throw on a raise there, and when, when Ed calls, you got to go, whoa, yeah. wait a second. You wish. You can go first. The action is on Barry. Oh, you can go first. He's got aces. Two oh, yeah. black yeah. aces, Steve. We lose 25,000, we get a few laughs out of it. Let's see what he's going to do with them. And you know what? This is, this is interesting. He's going to limp here, but like you said, it's a passive table. I don't know if I would choose to try to limp re-raise on this table. There's no guarantee anyone's going to raise pre-flop. No, there isn't. Let's see what happens, though. Yeah. And can he? And if this flop comes out bad for him, can he get away from it? He's got aces. There was no raise. Here we go. Nine, five, nine. And look at this. Jerry's got nine deuce in C3. Yep. Can Barry, will Barry give, you know, will he double Jerry through? And Ed comes out and bets 200 with queen five. He's got a pair. Now, this is a question. Now, Ed bets 200. I almost guarantee you Jerry's going to just smooth call the 200, right? You think so? Just because of the way that we think he's playing. Well, I'm just, I'm just, most yeah. people will do this, right? They're going to smooth call it. Now, if somebody bets it and somebody smooth calls, can you throw away aces? Here. I gotta tell you, Dave. I mean, let's see here. Fair enough. He's smooth call. I just don't think there's any way Barry's gonna get away from it. He's he doesn't he thinks he, he's just gonna raise. Yeah, and gonna uh, raise. you know, it's just. Uh oh. Well, the problem is Jerry. Jerry only has a thousand dollars. Yeah, that's true. So this is gonna be. I assume this is gonna be a fold from Ed. Whoa! Wow, Ed calls. Are you kidding me? I just need two more. That's unbelievable. Oh, Jerry must be dancing in his pants here. And Jerry's going to move all in now. And now, you know, Barry's committed himself so far. He's got money on the side with Ed. And look at this. You know, Jerry moves all in. The only in thing here. interesting is you wonder how much Ed is going to commit himself here. Can Barry make his money back from Ed? <laughs> well, we'll see how much this is. Only in increments of 10. And, folks, you are seeing the cards correctly, and all this money is going in. We're I, I gotta be, the other thing, too, Dave, is depending on how much more it is, say okay, the pot, Dave, right there, say right? the pot now the pot was about, say, $2,500, and it's an extra 700 you can still throw aces away here, can't you? I mean, well, you're I don't think it's you it, three it, to an one. extra 700 I mean, you mean? Yeah, yeah, it's an extra 700 four. I think. Huh? Well, let's, oh, maybe, maybe not. I didn't even think it was that much. Five. I might be, I we'll might be mistaken. Six. Actually, you're close. Yeah. 660. 660. Can you still throw aces here? How big is the pot? The pot is oh, about... 3,500. Actually, the pot's only 2,100. Oh, excuse me. 2,700 plus the 600 here. So 3,400. And look at this. He's going to re-raise Ed. But Barry, you're beat here. Again, it, it's an interesting hand, Dave. Well, he's always doing is protecting... Uh, He's yeah. taking Jerry's hand, obviously, and Ed's. Yep. Yeah, I, I got to tell you, I don't really like the way that Barry's played here. He should have just called. Why did he re-raise here? I think it's a big mistake, right? Well, to be honest, he should have folded. No, but I mean, to have Ed in the hand here, do you think Ed's on some sort of draw? Let's be honest. You throw a $200 bet in there, you got a $200 call, yeah. then you raise, you get a call, and then a re-raise. Yeah, Your aces I, are no good here, buddy. Okay. Yeah, you got to know that. Yeah. 40... Maybe. You know what I mean? you got to put the puzzle and together. Jerry's going to, yeah, he's going to double through here. Unless Barry gets really lucky. You have a nine. No, unless you have a nine. Yeah, I have a nine, too. I got two outs. Turns a jack. So I only have two outs. And he's right. He only has two outs. The river's an eight. And again, I mean, Ed could be holding anything. Maybe, you know, maybe Barry wanted to raise and see where Ed was, but there's no way Ed's going to fold a nine. Once, if Ed made that raise and, and if Barry made that raise and Ed called, I, I gotta think he would know he would be dead there. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can't criticize him for raising the flop, obviously. Okay, he wants to see where he's at. He wants to see if the guys are full of crap or not. But you know what? <laughs> Once you raise and you get the information that you were seeking, you gotta listen to that information. Yeah. Now, the hand before that, I just wanted to point it out, so I'll point out something. Action Joe. Oh, Action Joe wins in the game. Yep. I want to just point out one thing here. 
I think one of the reasons Barry was able to be bluffed out of that hand with against Ed was he pointed out, he goes, you know, a player like Avo or a player like Mo or even Gore, if you remember Gore from a long time ago, they're capable. They're players that are capable of making big bluffs. Right. And I don't think Barry thinks Ed can make a big bluff. So he gave him credit for a hand, which is why he threw it away. I mean, that's my only logic I can think of there. Like you said, it's not necessarily a bad laydown. It's just an issue there. And i got to say, if Jerry was really deep, I mean, could Barry get away from that? I mean, he really should have put the pieces together, like you said, right? There just comes a point where you go, the flop is 995, rainbow. Yeah. Right? Yes, sir. I mean, what could he have? Right? I mean, he, he called in between on the flop and then re raised all of it. I mean. Right. He also was in the big blind. He didn't raise out of the big blind, so you don't think he has kings or queens, right? I mean, what does he think the guy has, you know? Now, Joe raised out of the blind here, king, queen. He made it 20 more, $20 more to go. And Joe is checked. And Ed checks top pair right behind him. And the turn's a king, and now oh, Joe's wow. got a king. Look at that. And now he bets. 60. And Joe only had three outs against Ed. And Ed says, I got to pay you off. And he calls. So, in action, Joe's smiling over there. And the river here is a seven. And Joe only bets 40 here. $40? I think he might be scared that Ed might have a seven. How much did you bet? I think this is a, a scared blocking bet here on the river. Yeah, he's going to call. King, queen. Yeah, that's a, that's a bad beat there for Ed. <laughs> yeah. Well, Ed was dominated, outflopped him, but then obviously Joe caught up and passed on the turn. Yeah. And the button moves over here to seat three. Again, I, I just wonder, you know, could Barry have lost, say, $10,000 on that hand with the limp aces? Who knows? I, I, I just, I, I want to like ask you him. said, I mean, I, yeah. first of all, I don't understand why he limped in. And then if you, you got to know, though, if you limp in with aces, you, you can't, can't take, take the heat. Yeah. Yeah. You can't take the heat. And I think part of the reason was that, you know, Jerry was so, didn't have that many chips. And he said, ah, he doesn't have that many chips. Maybe I can just win it. Yeah. But then re-raising Ed out, what was the point of that? Well, that's that's what, that's what I was saying. I mean, cause, I mean, there's no way that Ed comes and bets out on a nine. There's absolutely no way. No, but let's be honest, though. If Ed actually miraculously had a nine, it's the only way he's going to call, right? right? That's the what I'm saying, yeah. Seven-way action here, limped around. Eight, seven, five here on the flop. Hey, good job by... Look at that job by Garo. Yeah, yeah, look at yeah. this. <laughs> Gets those out there like, bam. We got a hundred dollar bet here by uh, Joe Wynn. He's got top pair with eight deuce. Again, this pot was seven ways. It was a seventy dollar pot. Three pot. Now Jerry's got ten eight, and Shaheen. I'm sorry, Shaheen. I'm sorry. Jerry has ten eight. So top pair with a better kicker. Well, Joe came out and bet right from first position with eight deuce. A lot of people wouldn't do that, Dave. Ed's gonna call. Well, there's the lovely cocktail. Lovely cocktail. <laughs> Her name is Tracy. She has a name. Ed calls and Jerry folds 10-8. He folds 10-8. Wow. Okay. You know, maybe I misspoke about Jerry. Maybe he's playing okay. And the river's a jack. Ed was chasing, I guess, a straight. Well, he had an open in the straight draw. Yeah. Just didn't get there. Didn't Neither get there. Neither did nine or a, th or a four. I got to tell you, I mean... Um, it's kind of—it's a little bit of a dangerous bet there by Joe. I mean, it was limped around, but that's kind of a coordinated board to come out firing with eight deuce in early position. Well, I don't. To me, I got to be honest with you. Sometimes I like firing out there with even a weak pair and a kicker and no kicker because I want to see where everybody's at. Right. You know, who knows? Maybe I'll pick up the pot right there if everybody's missed. If I get called in three or four spots, okay, I'm done with it. Yep. Pocket 10s over here for seat 8, but pocket queens for Action Joe. You're over. 120? And he's going to raise it up to 120 here on the button. And you know what? I believe that Tyler's in a blind. So let's see how he plays pocket 10s here. You've got a button raise here. It could be a steal, Dave. He open raised. And he's going to re raise. Yeah. And you know what? He's going to re raise with the 10s. You said he plays 30 hold'em, which means he might be familiar with Action Joe wins play. Well, this is the first time I've ever seen him, though. I just oh, okay. played with him this afternoon. Because okay, Joe Wynn doesn't necessarily need a hand to raise, especially right. on the button. Right. This time he happens to have one, though. 
And hey, you, do you blame Tyler for making the re-raise with pocket tens here against an open button now, this is raise? the question here. Do you re-raise with the queens, or do you just play it slow? There's two, there, there are two ways to play this hand. You can play it fast, well, or yeah, you can let... The other thing is, are you going to let like a flop come with an ace and king and scare yourself out of there? Well, that's here a, we go to the flop. The he just it. calls, and there's a king, king, jack, six. And this is it's an action killer. There are two schools of thought here. You let the guy who who raised out of the out of the blind continue raising, continue betting into you. Well, Tyler's going to bet here. He's going to make the continuation bet. He re-raised -re pre-flop. He's going to bet the pot. That's a nice strong bet there on the turn. About an on the flop. $800 bet, and the pot's now $1,600, $800 to call. And Joe, by saying, like you said, by just smooth calling on the flop, is he going to get scared away now? Yeah. Pre-flop. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you, you take the risk by slow playing the, the queens. You take the risk of, you know, you're, obviously the reward is you can win a huge pot because you're disguising the strength of your hand. Yeah. But you also might either get scared out of the hand, and you might actually lose some action, too. Well, again, like you said, you can put the guy in a range of hands, and he probably doesn't have queens. But if he re-raised with jacks on beat, if he has aces on beat, if he has ace-king on beat, even if he has king-queen or something like that on beat, I can only beat tens or ace-queen right now, right? Right. Or nines or a smaller pocket pair. Now, you, gotta, you know, with queens, Dave, an overcard's going to flop, what, one out of three times on the flop, Probably right? something like that, yeah. So, I mean, it's a little bit more dangerous to do that to just to play it slow pre-flop as opposed to with kings or aces. Yeah, -flop. no, oh, oh, definitely. If, if, yeah. I have, if I have aces, it's a clear, it's an easy call there. Right. Easy to smooth call, let him bet into me, and then I'll make the move. Um, with queens, obviously, there's, there's, two, there's two trains of thought there. Again, the pot is $1,600. It's 800 to call, and Joe has really backed himself into a corner here. It also can be an action killer sometimes in the sense of, let's say, I mean, this time Tyler actually was aggressive enough to keep firing, but let's say the flop comes out ace, king, jack. You know, the tens might not continue. Right. Might just check and fold. You might lose some action. Or he might have called a little okay. raise pre-flop. Uh, well, Joe's going to call. He wow. calls. So now if you're Tyler, what do you think Joe has? Oh, you got to hate your hand here. Here we go to the turn. Turn's another king, and i got to think that Joe probably thinks that this is going to, you know, that's a good card for him on the turn, right? And what's happened here? Who's moved all in? got an all-in and a call. Oh, we got an all-in and a call. Well, there you and go. And the river's a deuce. Tyler moved all-in on the turn, and I believe that Joe called. And this is going to be a huge pot. Yeah, and actually, actually, actually Joe wins, got him covered. I counted yeah. Correctly. Joe, you want to count it down? I think it's 1960. 1960 more, and that pot... Dave is going to be about six thousand dollars. Pocket tens moved in on the turn, and Joe instantly called. Instantly called. Wow. I mean, Joe didn't even think twice about calling. Well, you know what? Let's be honest. All the decision Joe made was on the flop. Another king comes out. That doesn't change anything. If anything, right. that makes his queen stronger. Because now you go, okay, what are the odds this guy has kings? Very small, right? What are the odds he has aces? Okay, he might have aces. But if he has aces, the king's got to scare him, doesn't it? Right. You know, so I mean, to me, it's like, you know, I was already beat if the guy had a king. The second king doesn't do anything. Wow, good well, call. I got to tell you, I mean, that's sometimes the power of over betting human hands as well. If he had ace king and he moved all in, he would have got a call from Queens, right? Like you yes, said. Without a doubt. You know? Without a doubt. Uh, we got a couple emails here that I want to get to. Again, you can email us at live at bike.com. Jonathan wow. Hauser. He says, I've been watching the show for quite a while and really enjoy your commentary. Um, he says, I don't think I've heard you two comment on the difference, if any, in betting patterns in casino play versus internet play at mid-limits. For example, on the internet, when someone has a hand he thinks is a winner, more often than not, he goes all in rather than making an intelligent value bet in the river. There are many more examples I could cite. Maybe your commentary could highlight these differences when they arise, since so many of your viewers are internet players only. Well, thank you, Jonathan, for that email. We'll get to that in a second. Obviously, there are a lot of differences between internet play and brick right. and mortar casino play. Right. And uh, we'll do our best to highlight them. And obviously, well, while you watch, you can highlight them yourself. Right. Let us know about them. Well, and that was a huge. I mean, I want to say that was six thousand at least. Yeah. Six thousand dollar pot right there. Action show win takes it down. Pot is limped around here. Five way action. Eight six three with a couple of diamonds. So Ed played the ace queen slow, and you got to think again. He was probably trying to do a limp re raise because I think he was under the gun. Yeah, he likes to do that. Yeah. yeah. Now Tyler's got the uh, flush draw, and he's going to bet it, and he's rebought. I want to say for a couple of thousand dollars. Well, let's see how much is Tyler behind there in seat eight. And look at this, Ed, like often, Dave, he'll play a big hand slow preflop, and then he'll just call here with ace queen. He's got absolutely nothing. Nothing. 
And Barry can't make the same mistake here on the button, can he? I mean, the action's over to Joe Wynn, I believe he's yeah, holding. Let's be serious. Barry's got Black King and Black yeah. Jack. And again, how much is Tyler behind over there, Dave, with seat eight? Yes, just two. It's just a thousand I'm getting worried. A thousand dollars, okay. Turns to six, and Ed's hand with ace queen is still good right now. Barry's out of the hand. It is. What does Tyler do, though? Tyler checks, and Ed checks right behind him. Oh, and the river's the diamond, and Tyler has the flush. And I don't think he's going to bet 200 here. Is Ed going to just make the call with ace queen high? Well, we've seen him do that. We've seen him call with ace high. The problem is, though, if you look at the hand, you go, okay, what did this guy bet? Did he bet an eight? I can't beat an eight. Did he bet a diamond draw? I can't beat that. And then you go, okay, maybe he had seven, nine. And he makes the call with ace queen. Yeah. And Tyler's going to take down about a six or seven hundred dollar pot right there. And I'm going to ask our technicians to leave that flop on the board just for a second. Not, not the, not the, not the actual dealer, but the graphics, right, Dave? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so go ahead. Okay, now if we look at that flop. To me, a lot of times when you're faced with a tough call on the river, like, and you want to call it ace high, you got to start looking at a flop, right, Barton? You look at that flop, and you go eight, six, three, a couple diamonds. What might my opponent have when he bet, right? And you go, well, he could have four, five. Well, the five on the river would give him a pair of fives. Okay, maybe he has seven, nine. Well, the five would give him a straight. Okay, maybe he's got diamonds. Well, the diamond got there. And you start, start, you got to start painting the picture, you know, and, and, and building that story and go, can I beat anything? You know, and if you look at that, you go, there's no way I can beat anything. Well, Tony, you want to come in or you to wait? That's the important thing when you uh, look when at you're this, trying to make a tough call. Mexican poker player Tony, big time action game now, Dave. This you know this table's changed to being you know kind of tight passive and very loose. Yeah, a lot of calling. Almost have loose passive though. It's a great table. There's yeah. A couple, uh, Although you know, Tony sometimes, if he gets you know if he gets a little you know a little riled up, has yeah. a couple of drinks, he'll get real aggressive. Well, to get to that email about how you, I guess this gentleman. Jonathan Hauser feels that he sees more intelligent value betting live as opposed to internet play where people will just move all in with the overbet. I'm actually a fan of the overbet, but you have to mix your game up, you know, depending on where you are. Yeah. I think the problem with the internet play is how many of those guys are really willing to move all in with a bluff? So if they move all in, well, they've always got it. You know what I mean? I mean, that's what my experience has been, right, right. you know. I mean, to be honest with you, most players that move all in in live play usually have it too. Most players. Right. Now we got four-way action here, and I believe there was a raise by Barry with queen two of clubs, and he's hit a pair. Jack do six. And this is one thing I love about Barry's game. I'll, I'll tell him when he raises with crap, at least he continues with it. Well, when he raises with anything, he ra he continues. With yeah. It. Especially in position. He'll continue with it and, yeah. and, and take control until somebody shows him that he does not have the best hand. Well, he has the best hand now, though, with Queen yeah, does. But how does he know that? Well, now he does. And he's going to take it down. Actually, Barry's one of these guys where, again, I'm, I'm not a huge proponent of always check-raising, Dave. You know, I think that that can sometimes be a rather weak play if you habitually do it. Right. But Barry is almost an automatic better if he's raised pre -flop, from what I've noticed. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Uh, just, you know, Although, e out. even then, I, I don't mind betting my strong hands into Barry and hoping he has a really big hand. Right. Because he might either A, call me, or he might even raise, like in the case where he had aces there. Yeah. Putton's moved over here, seat nine. And once again, we are live at the bike, folks. I'm David Tuckman here with Bart Hansen. And you are watching No Limit Hold'em. Blinds are 10 and 20. Unrestricted buy-in game. Yep. We've already had a couple of big pots here. Action Joe Wynn took down about a $6,500 pot about 10 minutes ago. Now, this pot is limped around, and look at the flop over there for seat nine on the button. We haven't seen him play a hand. It's 5-3 deuce with two hearts. 5-3 deuce with two hearts, and seat eight is going to bet Tyler. He's got an open-ended straight draw and a flush draw. Oh, they got oh some this big is hands huge. Here. Tyler yeah. bets, and Macram races to 500. And Ed calls. He's got top and bottom. Oh, yeah. This Deuce is gonna, five. Oh, this is going to get ugly, And let's folks. see what Tyler does. Tyler's not that deep. He's going to move the rest all in. And this is going to constitute a re-raise. So let's see what Macram does. Well, Macram's not going to go anywhere. Tyler bet. Macram raised. Ed called. And Tyler's going to... And Macram's going to move all in here. And, and I don't think Ed's going to go anywhere either. Oh, no way. Ed's not going anywhere I here. think it's only maybe another thousand back to him here, Dave. 
And Tyler's in bad shape. Tyler actually needs, I want to say, an ace or six. That's not a heart. That's right. Tyler is, look at that flop. Seven, four hearts, deuce, three, five with two hearts. He's in horrible shape. Yeah. Horrible shape. I, I mean, i got to be honest with you. The favorite here, the favorite here, and is old Ed. by far. Yeah. So how much more is it here from Macram? Thirteen forty to me. He's moved in for eighteen forty, Dave. Macklem. So, so it's eighteen forty here, more for Ed to call. And how much is Tyler in there for? About eight hundred. Well, Tyler is in there for I I, I want to say a thousand, okay. probably total. Yeah, that's. So there's a, a th there's a thousand there. There's a thousand there from Tyler total. Ed's got five hundred in there. Macram had five hundred in there. So that means the pot right there is two thousand. Now Macram puts another eighteen hundred in. It's about a four thousand dollar pot, eighteen hundred for Ed to call. Now, is it an additional? Was that in addition to the five hundred they all called already? Yeah. And Ed's going to make the call. So we're looking at a six thousand dollar pot. Yes, we are. Plus or minus a couple of. And Ed is a big favorite here. Here we go to the turn. It's an offsuit six. And the river's a heart. Not, not, not. Tyler had the best of it on the turn, and Macro made the flush on the river. Yeah. Wow. wow. Oh, man. Amazing. And Macro takes it down. Huge. Yeah. And look at this. Tyler makes a, a real high straight on the river, but it's a heart. Yeah. I, I want to say that, uh, and, and on a flop, if I had, just off the top of my head, I want to yeah. say Ed was probably about a, probably win that hand about 50% of the time. I want to say that Macram's probably going to win that hand maybe 35% of the time, and Tyler's probably only going to win that hand 15% of the time. Yeah, that was a really freaky hand right wow. there. Wow. I mean, that I mean, was unbelievable. Macram must have loved that turn card. Yeah. And then the river obviously Donna. killed him. No, you mean Tyler must have loved the yeah, turn yeah, card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, And he's gone. I mean, he lost 3,000 like that out of seat 8. Well, yeah, well the first, his first buy-in actually was close to 4,000. Oh, I thought it was 2,000 he had. No, I remember he... Remember he uh, he raised actually 400 yeah. with the tens, then he bet 800, and Joe called, and then he moved all in for another 1800. Yeah. 1960. I'm sorry. On the flush draw, you go in like that. Stop bet and it's so I want to say he's probably down close to four thousand dollars in what? 43 minutes. What's his hourly rate? <laughs> And I think he's going to play the tournament tonight. And this guy's going to have to, I mean, you look at a guy like Tyler there, he's going to have to finish in the top three just to break even. Well, Matthew's into the game, new player in c -Day. If we got a raise here, and Matthew's going to buy him for 7000 over there in wow. seat 7. It's actually seat 8, excuse me. And I want to say we're going to get a lot of big-time players here tonight, especially with the tournaments. Yeah. Now we got a raise here by C3. We can't see what he has. And Barry Woods is in there with ace four spades. Well, and Barry Woods flops the nuts flush draw. Again, we cannot see what. Excuse me, it's Ed. So Ed raised out of the blind with pocket deuces, and he's going to bet 200. The flop comes jack eight seven. And Barry calls, and he picks up a pair on the turn, and Ed bets again. Barry's got a pair in the nut flush draw. Now this is the only question. If, if Ed, if Barry misses and Ed continues firing with his deuces, will Ed call the river? And this is here exactly well, what happens. Will Barry call the river? The river's exactly. a queen, and, and Ed's going to bet again. He's going to bet 600. And can Barry call it up ace four? What's well, a $600 bet into about an $1,800 pot, and Barry Woods is bluffed out again by Ed, the second time tonight. Well, I guess it's a secret here. Wow. You wanted to ask if anybody could ever bluff out Barry Woods, only if your name is Ed. Yeah. Clearly. I mean, a lot of people, I'm surprised that Barry didn't raise the turn there. I mean, Ed sometimes will just make those little small bets there. You know, Barry had a big hand on the turn. He had the nut flush draw plus a pair. Well, to be honest, if Barry raises the draw on the flop, if he raises the draw on the flop, right. Barry might, Ed might call, and they might just check it down the entire way. Right. Because that happens a lot of times. Sometimes you just stop somebody. Yeah. You slow somebody down, and then it just goes through. Yeah. Barry chose to play kind of slow, a little passive, and uh, ended up losing. Hey, I heard a rumor, by the way, that since nobody could beat me on Tuesday, my bounty is now going to be increased next week to $200. We're all your money if my and it will increase $100 each week and while I win. So I figure I'll probably go at least 12 or 13 weeks before somebody beats me. Oh, well, we got some big hands here. Moe's going to come in for a raise for 170 with 10, 9, 7 of diamonds. Ed's got ace queen. He's going to call from the button. C3's got ace king of diamonds. What's he going to do? Oh, you got ace king here. Wow. He's just going to call, it looks like. It's a $170 raise by Mo with 9 7 of diamonds. And he is dominated with the diamonds over there by C3. Yeah, and I hadn't heard much from Mo here. You think maybe he got a little impatient? Well, we've got over a $500 pot going three ways here. Mo, the pre flop raiser. 
No. Nope. And look at that. He's hit top pair. Yeah, he's in great shape here. 7-6-5 with two spades. Jerry checks. Mo's going to bet. Looks like about five, 400. There you go. And Ed calls with ace-queen. Come on, Ed. Get away from it, buddy. And Jerry folds. Wow. Here we go to the turn. Turns a six. Okay, check. And check, Mo check. And Mo knows he probably has the best hand. And the river's a ten. And Mo's going to take it down. It goes check, check on the river. Mo takes it down with a seven. Wow. And the, the funny thing is most people go... Wait a second, Ed shows that hand. Everybody must be wondering, why is he calling the flop? But these players know Ed. Ed's right. here to have a good time. He's here to gamble. Right. right. And you know what? $400 doesn't mean that much to him. Right. <laughs> Not, I mean, that might mean something like four cents to me, Dave. i got to be honest with you. We'll put it into real perspective. And the button moves over there to seat three. Wow, what a hand there. Again, by, by Tyler and... Uh, Huge hand. And, and i got to tell you, this Friday... Is, is really starting off great, like every Friday. Another great show. And 120. Wow, 120 from uh, our new player, Massey, there in seat eight. Got pocket tens. And look at this. Eddie's going to re raise to 420 with ace, queen of clubs. Ace, jack, excuse me. So let's see what Matthew does. Now, now Matthew I, says that he watches live at the bike, but he's never been on the show, and he's coming down here just for this game. i got to tell you, Matthew's in an in in interesting spot. First of all, okay, it's Ed. Right. So you go, okay, I'm going to discount that. And, and look at this, he folds. I don't mind the play at all because yeah. you don't know where you're at. Because you got to remember, good players get ba good cards, bad players get good cards. You know what I mean? They, it makes no difference. The cards have no memory. They don't know who they're going to. Well, Dave, look at last hand. Ed didn't re-raise Mo with Ace Queen, and he showed it down at the end. Exactly. If Matthew's privy to the show. He knows Ed. How often does Ed re-raise preflop? Not often. Very rarely. But I love the play by Ed. It's it's a little bit of a tournament play, and I love it. He raises with Ace Jack suited in position, and Matthew's put in a spot where unless he flops a set, how does he know where he's at? There's Alan. There he is. And we got pocket tens over here for uh, Barry Woods. He's in the big blind. But uh, Ed's got ace king in seat two. Wow, man. He's getting some cards, huh? And he just limps. And Barry might raise out of the blind, and Ed might re raise. Yeah. And look, Barry's going to raise it to 100. Let's see if Ed pulls the limp re raise. And there it is, Dave. We know these players like the back of our hands, don't we? Definitely. He's going to raise it to 500. Five more. And and the, the thing with the thing with Barry we'll calls. see it here now Barry we know he's going to call it pocket tens tens are tough to play out of position. Well, five four four here. Barry's in great shape here, but how does he know what Ed's got? Ed could have kings. He's going to bet two thousand, Dave. Well, I think he'll find out right and now. And look at this, Ed calls. No, and it's a thousand dollar bet. Excuse me, Barry bet and Ed called a thousand dollar bet. The turns a seven. Wow. So the pot's now three thousand. What's it? Twenty two hundred dollar pot. And look at this. Barry checks. Ed moves all in. Ed has moved all in after Barry has checked. And can Ed bluff Barry out again? And this is the problem with tens out of position, folks. How do you know where you're at? And it's how much is the bet here by Ed? I got to tell you. 1530, Dave, into a $2,200 pot. The pot's 3700 1500 for Barry to call. I tell you, if Ed pulls this off, he is the player of the night, bar none. What a play. Card, Ed. And uh, Barry says, show me a card. If you mark, I'll show you my card. Oh. If you don't, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> you want the left one, right that's one, which one, one? Yeah, that's good one. Barry. And this is, uh, uh, like I keep saying, tens are tough to play out of position. This is, you, you look at the flop, you go, wow, it's a dream flop for tens. But remember, Ed is shown strength here. There's Ed of aces, kings, queens, jacks. How do you know? I mean, Ed called the flop a thousand like absolutely it was absolutely nothing. You almost got to think the guy's got an overpair, right? And Ed Link re-raised pre-flop, right? It's just a really tough call with pocket tens. I mean, it really is. You put yourself in a position with pocket tens. I mean, to me, I, I don't mind the fold here. Yeah, look at this, Barry. He's been bluffed out by Ed three times, and Ed's gonna show the bluff, Dave. He shows the bluff. Oh wow. Yeah, and, and he can't blame, you know what though, I can't blame Barry for folding that hand. Uh, uh, Barry didn't play it bad at all. He smooth calls free, I mean he raises, then he smooth calls Ed's raise. The flop looks like it's favorable for him, so he throws out a little feeler bet, see where he's at. And Ed immediately calls. you got to go, oh shoot, Ed called. Okay, maybe he's got an overpair. Well, I'll check yeah, it and see I mean, what that's, he does. That's... 
And Ed didn't miss a beat when he moved all in. Yeah. You know, he almost jumped out of his chair to put the chips in the pot. Dave, we had an email here from uh, from uh, Dick Hickman in Ohio. Good old Stating Dickie. that he started a voice and text pal talk thread about live at the bike. And, a what? Uh, I don't know exactly what that is, but if he's told many peep, many students at the poker school online about all the good works on the webcast. So, poker school online people, thanks for watching. Fabulous. And and how can you check out this pal? Uh, pal oh, you go to paltalk.com. Ah, down to paltalk. Okay. P a l t a l k. I guess. And we got six way action. And we had a raise by Mo with pocket deuces, and he's hit uh -oh. bottom set. And Joe, action Joe Wynn, who has trouble getting away from top pair, has king-queen. He called with king-queen and dominated hand on the button, and Mo's going to make a little continuation bet here with pocket deuces. He raised it pre-flop. Oh, and I love Mo betting his set. I love Mo betting his and, set. And it's just a little bet, and Joe makes the call. And we are heads up, pocket deuces against king-queen. The turn's a five. Oh, I love Mo betting it. And he's going to bet here again. He's going to bet 200 now. Oh, I love it. I love it, Mo. And Joe quickly calls. And i got to tell you, let's see how much Mo's going to bet on the river here. It's a 10. You've got to think Joe's got a king. What? Oh, Mo's only going to bet 200 here? Come on, Mo, bet more. Oh, he really could have extracted a lot of money here. I, I don't know why he only bet 200 here on the river. He's going to take it down there with a set of deuces. Well, wait a second. Did Joe call? Yeah, Joe called. Oh, Joe did call. Joe okay. called immediately. I was going to say. I mean, the pot, the pot. Where is the ace? King, queen. He shows the, the king, queen. Dave, the pot was like $800 there on the turn. I mean, yeah, I put a bet $1,000 there on the river. Well, yeah, I'm wondering. I'm going to ask him about that because I always like to give him a, a, a chance to, to talk about it. But I'm curious there. The flop is king, four, deuce, rainbow, right? Right. You bet and you get called in a spot. It's a raised pot and you get called in one spot. You almost got to say the guy's got a king, right? Then you bet on the turn, and the guy still calls. You go, okay, this guy's definitely got a king. Right. Why not bet at least the pot? Why not bet six or seven hundred dollars in the And I think Ed just said that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Ed just said you could have bet a thousand bucks. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> got to give Mo a little bit of a hard time about that one. Well, I'm curious why he bet so small. Now Barry Wood just got ace king here on the button. I don't think that's worth five bucks, is it? I don't know. And he's going to raise it up to 120 here. Okay. 100 more? You know the only thing, I'm not sure is Ed, I mean, I'll tell you right now, Ed should not, Ed has bluffed Barry three times tonight. Yeah. And he probably shouldn't have shown that because I don't know if he'd ever be able to bluff him again. <laughs> right. Well, it's not like, I mean, Barry will go watch, go home and watch the show. Though. No, you're right. He is, he does, he is a, a active archive watcher. Now, it's 100 more and we're going to see... Four-way action, so it's a $400 pot. Barry raised it pre-flop with ace-king. Four-five queen. Look at the flop there for Joe Wynn. He's got an open-end straight draw, but Ed's got top pair, and he's going to bet. He bets 400. I got to tell you, Ed's game's really improved. I mean, look at him. He's betting. He, he took up. He bluffed a couple of times. Barry going to be stubborn here and raise, Dave, because you know there's no way that Ed's going to go anywhere with his hand. Uh, you know, when, when Joe overcalls, I think Barry's going to let it go. Joe calls. Yeah, I think that might save Barry. Yeah, I mean, if it's heads up, it's different, but... Oh, my. He called with ace-king. My goodness. Yeah, a little frustration. You know, it happens to the best of us. Turns a three, and there's the straight for Joe Wayne. He picks up a flush draw as well. Oh, his hand is huge. I mean, everybody else is drawing dead, folks. Ed's going to bet here 500 here. And do you smooth call one more time, or do you bet you raise it right now? I think you raise it right now. He's just going to call. Trying to keep Barry in there. Can Barry overcall again with Ace King? He makes the overcall again, Dave. Wow. And the pot now is about thirty-one hundred dollars. The river's a four. And Ed's gonna bet again. And 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 Joe just calls and Barry's out of there. It was an eight hundred dollar bet here with Queen Jack. Joe calls. He never put any more money in the pot. Joe just called. Yeah, Joe just called the whole way. Wow. And Joe takes down about a $4,500 pot there. Again, this play just continues to amaze me. Barry, he overcalled the flop with Ace King. He overcalled the turn with Ace oh, okay. King. Okay, forget Barry. I, I just don't understand. Okay, I am completely flabbergasted. You have the nut straight against Ed, and you don't raise? What? What is he doing? <laughs> I mean, are you kidding me? I, I don't. I, I, I just, Gosh!
I mean, people can criticize us all we want because, we, you know, sometimes we're hard on these players. And Action Joe Wynn, I love the guy. He's such a nice guy. Well, let's be serious. That was, I mean, that's just crap. I, I understand his thinking, okay, on the turn, let me call. I actually would have liked to raise there, but, okay, let me call and keep Barry in there. Well, then Barry smooth calls again, right? Okay, if anybody had a set there, I think you're going to hear from them. Right. I got to tell you, we know, we know that Joe could have got paid off to the tune of maybe four to five thousand more, maybe even all in with Ed with the with the Queen Jack. And uh, we got three way action here, ten eight five. I mean, against Ed, Dave, you really need to make those value bets, don't you? I mean, Ed's got like what is that, three or four thousand more, right? Yeah. Gosh, I mean, all that he money could have been Joe's. could have made a ton of money there. I mean, he won on the river if Joe Bays is two thousand. You know that. You know Ed's going to call that. Now this pot was limped around and got checked to Matthew, who bet with top pair, and, and Ed's going to call with queen nine. He's got a gut shot to the jack here. Yeah, backdoor spade draw. Turns a queen, and he's hit an over card, which is good. And he checks. Yeah, the call by Ed is not as bad as it might seem there, because obviously a jack gives him a straight, yeah. and nobody really sees it. Matthew bets 200, and Ed just calls. And the river here's a five. And Ed checks again. And Matthew's going to check right behind him, but Ed's going to take it down there yeah. with Queen. And it's a good check by Matthew on the river there. You're not really going to get called by a hand that can... Well, you never know with Ed, but you're probably not going to get called by a hand worse than a 10-6. i got to tell you, that 5 might have slowed me down on the river, because the only thing now, you know, you think that you might be able to get a value call out of is, is an Ed is calling with an 8. Yeah, so. exactly. Remember I lost the 5 Um... Yeah, Tony's going to move over there, seat nine. We got a new player. Good old Tony. In seat four, Allen. But Dave, yeah, I mean, uh, again, I love Barry Woods as well, but he, it's just frustration, Dave, with the overcall of Ace King, you know, a uh, couple times. But like you said, I mean, Joe missed a lot of money there. Yeah, on the turn or on the river, wherever he did it. I mean, well, because his thinking, if his thinking is, I want to keep Barry in there, okay. The problem is those the five hundred dollars extra that Barry put in there. You don't think you could have made that up from Ed? And then oh, some? I I have those three. I remember, I remember that hand. Barry's going to limp in here with a suited okay, connector. Well, Ed beats Ed I got him with those three options. I mean, the only thing I can say about Ed is, you know, I mean, Ed just kept betting, and maybe, you know, maybe Joe was actually scared of the full house. Maybe he thought Ed had a set. We've got five-way action here. It's limped around. King, eight, deuce, all hearts. And uh, it looks like we don't really have a high heart yeah. out there. Ed's got the highest heart out there. He's nine hearts. Nine, seven now. But nobody's got anything really special here. Well, Tony's going to come out and bet here with jack six. He's going to bet with the six high flush draw, seat nine. And again, with this type of board, king, eight, deuce, all hearts, like, it's very difficult if you fire in there for anybody to call without top pair and a good kicker or a high heart. But look at that, though. What do I know? Ed calls with 9-7 with the 9 of hearts. I mean, Ed, you know what? It is very difficult. Ed really strained by putting his money in there. Looked like he did, at least. Turns a heart. Now both players have flushes. But Tony's got a pair of jacks. Does that count for anything? <laughs> and Tony's going to bet 200 here. Actually, 400. 400, you're right. Yeah. Two stacks of 10s, obviously. Stacks are in 20s. Now, this is the problem. Ed's gotten there, and he doesn't know if he's any good. I mean, I got a flush, too, but I don't know how he's Oh, these guys are having a good time. Though. i got to hand them to that. Oh. Yep. All right, so and look at this. Ed's going to make the call. Not the first time so said the issue now, though, is does, does oh, Tony think God. he needs to yes, block yes, here yes, at the yes, end yes. to win? Yes, I would yes, imagine yes, he yes, thinks he must. Yes, yes, yes. Ed checks. Oh, no, he did, uh, four, and Tony's going to bet 460. I don't know if that's going to be enough. Yeah, I don't think he has enough money to get up the hand. Ed's calls. And it's going to be over a $1,000 pot there with a nine-high flush. Yeah, and that's Tony's inexperience there. If the guy calls me on the turn for $400, that's a tough call. He's got, Tony turns over jack six, and Ed's like, no, I got the nine. <laughs> I mean, but that's, that's the inexperience there. If a guy calls, if, if the fourth heart comes out there, I like Tony's aggressiveness, and he throws out a little $400 bet out there. Yeah. But if you get called there... So that's where you kind of got to go, you know what, this guy's not going anywhere. Yeah. Especially, I mean, think about it, the pot's already $1,200, $1,300. He's not going to go anywhere for 400 Nice read, actually. Wow. You can't have, you got to read the guy and call. Sorry, Tom. If not, you can't call. Then the, the way you guys played it, you read him very good. And the button's going to move over here to seat two. I tell you, it never... Never ceases to amaze me what we see here at Live at the Bike. You're reading good. 
I, I mean, this game is just it's insane. crazy action. Like you said, people are giving money away. I think it's one of the Come best down games. And drive here if you're within a 500 mile radius of the game. Just fly here. What does a flight cost? Three hundred dollars? Right. Jump on JetBlue. Get here. I know from the East Coast, flights are no more than say 500 on like one week's notice. No, I mean way in advance or like 350. But I mean, yeah, I mean you can fly JetBlue right into Burbank. <laughs> 20 miles from here. Now we get a raise here by uh, seat 8, I believe. And actually, it's Allen with seat, in seat 4, raised with Ace Queen is suited. Matthew called. Allen's pretty deep, too. He's got a couple of thousand dollars in front of him. Ed called with 10 3 of spades, and look at the flop for Ed. He's got a flush draw and top pair. Yeah, but his flush draw is no good. Allen's got the overcards and a higher flush draw. Allen bets 200 here. And this is interesting. I wonder if this might be a big pot. If it could. It could actually, a lot of it go in right now. Let's see what Ed does. No, he's just going to call. Okay. The pot now is about $600. Here we go to the turn. Turns a jack. Now Alan picks up additional outs. Yep, he needs a king. Again, we're heads up. And it goes check, check. And the river's a queen. And Alan's got the best hand now. Matt, now time to a little value bet here. He bets, looks like 200 into about a pot that's maybe $600. Yeah, he probably could have bet a little bit more, maybe. That's not a bad value bet. I think he gets a call out of Ed here, don't you? And Ed calls. And Alan's going to take it down there with the ace-queen. And if you want to be a winning poker player, it's imperative to be able to have the, the balls to throw in that little value bet on the river. You know, you know, if we saw that hand with those two hands with some more advanced players there, Dave, a lot of the money could have gone in there on earlier streets. Oh, well, let's be, I mean, I mean, let's be honest. If Ed wanted to, he would have been well within his, uh, you know, it would have been a, a really actually a correct play to throw in a nice check raise right on the flop, right? Yeah. And then Alan probably has hands strong enough to actually push, or push a lot, you know, push right back. <laughs> Me too. I don't know what. I don't think either player gets away from the hand, though, and I think it ends up being an Alan. Obviously, it's going to be Alan's no matter what it happens. Would I dare make fun of you, Coco? Okay, I wouldn't do that. You're my mentor. Limped around him. And Action Joe Wynn's going to raise out of the big blind. He's got Ace Queen off suit. He's going to make it 80 more here, Dave. Barry's got King Jack to his immediate left. Does he want to get involved with an easily dominated hand? He does make the call yeah. in early position. Ed's got a suited Ace 5. You know he's coming in over there in seat 2. Jerry's got a suited Ace 4 in seat 3. Sounds like we have a thunderstorm in the casino. <laughs> Yeah, that goes Ed calls. And Jerry calls with ace four. I mean, that's if I'm going to go get in with ace rag, ace rag suited, that is, I want it to be ace wheel card. And look at these hands. Five players. And there they are. Yeah, king, six, jack here. Look at this, Barry's flop, top two pair. Now, Joe had raised out of the blind. Let's see if it continues. Now, four players call me king, jack. Do I really want to continue with ace queen? And it gets checked to Barry, and Barry's going to bet. He's going to bet 220 here. Yeah, no point in messing around here. 220 into a $400 pot. And Ed, Ed can't call here, can he? Well, he's fine. I don't think anybody can call this. Well, I don't think anybody should call this. Right. What happens? I don't know. I mean, $220. You know, he's putting in a little bit, a little bit under half the pot, or about half the pot, right? And Ed makes the call, Dave. Yeah, he's Unbelievable. Got, yeah, he's got backdoor spade draw <laughs> and an overcard. Um, oh, my. And sometimes he just wants to see one more, see what happens. Alan folds. Um, I'll Joe's tell you one got thing. a gut shot now to the 10. And that might have priced uh, Joe in there no, if he thinks gonna, his overcard is good. And Ed would need some sort of combination of running cards here. The turn's a five. He's got a pair. Yeah, but now, now he needs an ace, a five, Yeah. or an ace or a five. And now Bar and Barry bets 400. And Ed quickly calls. Well, he called with nothing. Of course he's going to call to get five. And here we go to the river. The river's a seven. Barry's got there. He's got the king jack. Yes, yes, yes. And did Barry just move all in? No, I, I don't know oh, what's okay. happened here. He's going to bet a thousand, Dave, into a pot that's about 1,500. Nice value bet here. He's hoping. He hopes Ed has a king. Yeah, he's hoping, king, he's hoping, hoping that Ed has a king. And if he has a king, he's going to call him. Yep. I mean, let's be honest. Ed's contemplating calling with a five. Right. And this is what makes playing against a guy like Ed really difficult, actually, because you never know what he has. It's a $2,500 pot, a 1000 to call here on the river. You know what I mean? I mean, there's no way in a million years you're playing against somebody, Bart, and the guy calls you a $200 bet on the river. You put him on ace five. 
No chance. I think you got ace queen. And he says, I think you got ace queen. Well, Joe I'll had ace queen. A thousand bucks. And he calls. He makes the call. And King Jack's going to take it down. Wow. He called the flop with ace five. He called the turn with ace five. Put a check neck next to Barry. What's his name? Yeah. He's got the top two pair. I mean, let's. I mean, the only thing I will say with that is, you know, he First put Barry. He, he 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 had a read on Barry. He thought uh, Barry had ace queen, and uh, he was just wrong. But at least he went with his conviction. Right. How often times you see somebody go? I think he had ace queen, but I'm going to fold anyway. At least he said, I think he had ace queen. I'm going to call. He put his money where his mouth was. Obviously, this time he was not correct. Wow. Yeah. And look at this. There's our first chip count of the night. Matthew in the lead. He now he bought in for 7,000, so he's down a couple of hundred. Barry has been up and down all night, but he's back to 6,000 now. Joe, after a couple of big wins, up to 5,800. Uh, Shaheen, we haven't heard much from him. He's ringing up the rear with 900. And uh, Mo in the middle there with 3,500. Real interesting. We'll see how this goes the rest of the night. And again, we always see Mo just play real, really straightforward in these types of games now, Dave. It's incredible. Limp, limp, limp here. Well, how do you mix it up? I mean, the only thing I'll say again, Ed, is, like I said before, it's difficult. Most times when you somebody raises or somebody bets and a guy calls you, you can put him on a range of hands. Right. But there's no way to put Ed on a range of hands. We got five-way action here, and uh, Action Joe wins flopped top two pair here, and he checked him. Actually, I think that, oh, excuse me, he only has top pair. He's got queen nine, queen eight, seven, eight here. And it gets checked around again. Joe is not betting the rivers an ace. I got to tell you, at this point, if I'm Joe, I just want to check it down, and hopefully I win. Yeah. I just I can't believe that still Joe didn't put any more money in against Ed there with a straight. I mean, there, my God. Well, there have been two times where we've seen experienced professional poker players leave money on the table. And as far as I'm concerned, I think Mo. Mo did it with Action Joe, yeah. Yeah, we saw an email. I think the email was from... Uh, I saw before. I didn't Dave know. Jones. From Dave Jones, and he, and he was talking about how, you know, Mo obviously could have made more money on those pocket deuces when he made a set, and Joe had king queen with top pair, and and then obviously Joe left money on the table. Right. You know, and that's what poker's all about. Got to maximize those wins. Once again, you know, I mean, you and I, we're, we're Mo's biggest supporters. I love Mo's game, but man, that's five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars that could have been in my pocket. Now we get a raise here by uh, Matthew. He's moved over to C3. He's going to raise to 80. And he gets called by Allen with a weak ace. And look at this. Tony's in there. We can't see what he has over there in seat 9. Yeah, he's got queen 6. Off suit. Wow. King, king 5 here. Well, Matthew's got the best hand here with 10, 5 suited. I love when I would say wow, like as if it's a surprise to us anymore. He's going to bet 120 here. And uh, he's going to take it down. Interesting post here by Johnny on 2 plus 2. Again, if you want to follow a thread that started on the internet, you can uh, go to 2 plus 2.com, spelled out, click on forums. World Poker Tour, another televised tournament, the official Live the Bike thread for December 9th. Johnny says, Does Ed watch the archives? Is Ed using what Shirley told Barry? that Ed only bets when he's strong. Well, I don't know if I can give that much credit to Ed, but I can tell you, Shirley has probably told Barry, because it's usually correct, that when Ed bets strong, he has it. And that's why Barry's folded against Ed. Now, you gotta change your feeling, you gotta change your, you know, your game plan now, because now you know that Ed can mix it up. Well, you know what's interesting yeah. is, if you watch the archives, and you know somebody else watches the archives, you right. can start going, well, he's thinking that I'm thinking that you're thinking this, so I'm gonna do this instead. And it gets really interesting. Now we had a raise here by Tony to forty dollars with six four offsuit from small blind. Don't really know the minimum raise there. Well, he's got the best hand. Maybe he knew he was going to flop the best hand. Oh, yeah, actually, Tony did it with Jack ten. Excuse me. And he's going to bet a hundred. Jack ten of diamonds. Mo folds the six four. Ed folds Jack five. And Tony's going to take it down. Maybe he's on side smoking. No, he's been going for like an hour. Again, Dave, you know, I, I, I say that, uh, you know, Shirley's probably, you know, you know, Shirley's kind of Barry's mentor, you know. Doesn't really? mentor mean teacher? Excuse me. Yeah, uh, that's, yeah, that's you know, correct. Kind of his teacher. And, uh, you know, he's kind of, Shirley's, you know, trying to guide Barry and, you know, better his play. So, so I'm, I'm sure that Barry's learning from a girl? <laughs> 
Oh, man. I'm sure she has told him that usually Ed does not bet strong unless he has it, comes out and bets. But we can tell that tonight that's not the case. No, hey, you know, yeah. I want to give credit to Ed here. He's mixed up his game. As early as even a month ago, a couple months ago, Ed was really only betting strong when he had something strong. But, you know, he has mixed it up. Now, Barry raised it up here to 140 with pocket nines. Allen's going to call with ace-10 suited. And Joe's in there with ace-queen. Yeah, 1,000. We've got about a $420 pot going three ways. King-queen four. What a flop here. Allen's got the nut flush draw. And, again, Barry is going to bet right in here. I think he gets checked how many bets. Well, I don't mind the, the one bet. He bets once. See where he's at. 340. He'll find out really quick that he's in bad shape. Let's see what Allen's going to do. But is Allen just going to check call the whole way here? Because he's a passive player. He's yeah. some, somewhat big enough to make a move here. Well, he's got a huge end. He's got an overcard, yeah. which obviously he doesn't know is good or not. Because somebody could have ace-queen or ace-king. But he knows if a jack comes off, he's good. And he knows if a heart comes off, he's good. And he just check calls. And now can Joe make the overcall? I don't think so. Mm, that's a tough overcall there. Because once again, you're not sure if you're up against Ace King, and if you're up against Ace King, you're really drawn slim. Or or ten bucks. Well, worse pocket kings, you know, pocket aces, yeah. right? But the interesting thing is, if Allen knows what Joe has, it's actually a correct call because you want to keep Joe in that hand. <laughs> well, Joe folds. Doesn't work, obviously. Now we're heads up here. And you know, here we go to the turn. The turn's a four, and Barry still has the best hand. Yep. Yeah. And it goes check, check. And look at this. Joe is really upset. And the river's a king. Yeah, and Barry's hand is going to hold up here. I don't think Allen's going to have a gush of fire. And Joe knows. Joe knows. And look at this. But Barry's going to bet. I love it. I love the bet here. He might even get a call from Allen with ace high. No. He no. Why, you think that he's making the, you know, he's trying to bet here because he thinks that Allen might call with the ace there. He might. Yeah, why not? Yeah. At that point, you know your hand, your nines are good, right? You don't think that, you don't think that Allen could have checked a queen twice there? You know? Yes. Alan check called there on the flop. I don't know. Then checked and checked. Ah, well, the point have. is, is that Joe knew when it got checked around on the turn that he oh. had the best hand. Of course he, he did. Angry. Yeah. And he knows it. And Alan, Alan calling, obviously calling Barry's first bet, was um, saved Barry's hand. Right. But let's be honest. If Joe's the aggressor on the hand, he probably wins, right? Well, I mean, by checking to Barry, you know he's always going to bet. So it's right. maybe he just was trying to get the information of what Alan was going to do. Yeah. And again, you don't know what Alan has either, though, Dave. You know, it's just. Six-way action here. Limped around. Seven, deuce, three, a couple of spades. Interesting email that from Joseph there talking about that big hand where Joe made the straight yeah. versus Ed when the board, the board paired on the river. And obviously, yeah, you got to somewhat be scared of a full house there. But, you know, Joe had the absolute nuts in the turn. Right. Get some money in that pot. Come on. Now, Joe bet 180 here with queen seven. And that's a little over the size of the pot. He has top pair, and it looks like he has the best hand. Now, I don't know what Barry is thinking with ace-10 okay. over here, Dave. Yeah, overcards over cards are crap in No Limit Hold'em. you got I mean, to know that. the pot's limped around. Unless you have another draw also. Overcards with a straight draw. Yeah. Overcards with a flush draw. I mean, I'm amazed that guys still do this. I mean, it's not Limit Hold'em. Are you kidding yeah. me? Especially in a limped around pot. I mean, you have ace-10. Yeah. What did the guy has ace-3? Well, we said that Barry got killed when he limped in with aces, and he couldn't, you know, he couldn't yeah. get away from it. Now, that email came from uh, from Joseph. He said, it was too risky for Joe to raise on the river since two pair would have, with a four would have filled up. But, I mean, still, it's Ed. I don't care what you say. You've got to put value raises and value bets against him. He's going to call you down with one pair, especially if it's top pair. I mean, you know? I, mean I can understand the fear. I mean, Joe is pretty deep. He knows Ed's real deep. And if, if Joe makes a $2,000 raise and then Ed goes all in for 5000 more, well, then what do you do? Yeah. You kind of put yourself in a tough spot. But, you know, Joe kind of made his bed there because he didn't raise in the turn. Yeah. All right, never mind, Joe. I mean, hey, you can make an argument for every kind of play. But uh, in my opinion, I guess in your opinion, too, he definitely could have made more money in that pot. Yeah. No, no, no. We got a new player coming in here. There he is. Seat eight. And his name is Hun. So, okay. We got pocket jacks over here. In the big blind for uh, seat four, who I guess is Jerry. He moved over there. And look at this. Mo is going to raise with queen jack. He's going to raise it to 190? Wow. 
The button calls with queen nine. Small blinds in there, and what is Jerry going to do with pocket jacks and seat four? He just calls. And that, excuse me, that's Allen over there in seat four. I'm sorry, not Jerry. The flop comes nine eight five with two hearts. Nice flop for jacks, huh? But Ed's got queen nine. And this is one of those hands where Ed can really lose a lot of money. He can trap himself here. And, Ed, and, and Alan's going to bet. Yeah, he bets right into it. And anytime when Ed, He's going to bet 400. When Alan shows strength, which is rare, he usually has something pretty big. Yeah. And look at this, though. Matthew's got bottom two pair, and he checked it from up front. Oh, my. Ed's got top pair, Alan's got an over pair, and Matthew has bottom two pair that he checked from up front. Now, this is a case where Moe's got over cards plus the gut shot straight draw, and which is why Moe's thinking about it. Alan bet 400 right in here, Dave, and, and Moe gets away from it. And what is Ed going to do with Queen-9? He's going to call. Let's see what Matthew does. Dave, the pot now is $1,300, 400 to call. And he's going to move all in. And let's see how much more it is. Wow. He moves all in with bottom two pair. I, I, I mean, I... Wow. It's like... He moved all in for like seven thousand yeah, dollars. He's got like seven thousand there. I mean, Alan only has probably about fifteen hundred to two thousand there. But Ed's got like six thousand. Yeah, and Ed might not get away from this one, folks. This could be it right here. Wow. He's gonna and move all in for let's call it seven thousand dollars, which means the pot is about I wanna say nine thousand dollars. Seven thousand a call, and I, actually Ed doesn't have seven thousand there, Dave. Six or seven thousand, I don't think. And he won a couple of big pots. He's got to have some money, doesn't he? Well, oh no, okay. He's only got thirteen. He's only got thirteen thirty. He's gonna make the call. Uh, yeah. It looks like. And here. I think that's the reason why Matthew moved all in. He wasn't actually moving all in. He was right. playing the stacks. Turn is an ace, and the river is a five. And look at that. Ed makes a flush. He's got the queen of hearts in his hand. Yeah. Wait a minute. Do but we Matthew's have a board? Made a full house. And yeah, uh, yeah. Matthew's got the five on the river. Wow. <laughs> wow. We saw the four hearts out there. We got so excited for Ed, and then didn't realize obviously that was a full house for Matthew. Wow. Any other heart would have done it except the five of hearts. Yeah. And obviously the ace of hearts on the turn there really gave Ed a lot of outs. Any heart except for the five. And obviously any uh, any nine would have done it as well. Actually, even an ace would have done it, let's be honest. Right. Yeah, a lot of outs. That ace of hearts really made it, made it kind of treacherous there for Matthew. But Matthew escapes and takes down what will turn out to be a... Uh, I want to say about a it's probably a four to five thousand. Yeah, about a four thousand dollar pot, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Ed rebuys for five thousand dollars. <laughs> we got a new player in seat eight. Get his name for you in a second. And uh, guy in seat eight's name is Hun. And his name is Hun Joe. We're getting word of. And he's in there. He doesn't have that much money, actually. Hun Joe. It looks like he's bought in for close to the minimum, which is a thousand dollars. Got about thirteen hundred. Get an eighty dollar raise here from seat nine. That's Tony, and he's raising it up with ace ten, off suit. Nobody wants to play this. Gets the Barry. He's trying to negotiate, see if he can get his blind back, but Tony won't have any of that. Wow, what a big hand there. Give uh, let's give Alan credit for getting rid of his jacks. And um, and Ed just did not have enough money to get away from me. He kind of looked at it and he said, "You know what? I I only have 1,300 left." So he called. Obviously, if a player moves all in, and you have less than that, it's obviously you are, you are only required to put in what you have. Those old-time movies where you see a guy reaching into their pocket for wads of cash, that can't happen, and doesn't happen. Once again, we are live at the bike. I'm David Tuckman here at Bart Hansen. We're playing No Limit Hold, the blinds are 10 and 20. Get a limp in here from Matthew. And uh, Alan's going to limp in on a button. And it's limped around five ways, $100 pot to the flop. And we got a flop of 863, a couple of hearts out there. And uh, I believe the best hand is actually going to be seat two, is Ed. He's got queen eight. And Alan has 9-8, and Hun has 8-5. Wow, the case 8 out there, and they all have top pair. Real interesting. Let's see how this is played. 
Ed has the best hand, and he's going to bet it. Oh, and actually, I, I'm getting word that actually Hun threw out the little uh, little $60 bet there, and he's called in what I'm looking like in every single spot except for Barry. And four players in the, in the pan now. Wow, what is Matthew doing in there with 10 7? He's got the gut shot straight draw. And Barry is not in there at the King 5. The King does nothing to everybody. Ed is still in the lead here with Queen 8, and his kicker will play. It checks around, and the Ace of Diamonds on the river changes nothing except it's probably an action killer, and so probably go check around. And Ed takes it down here with a pair of eights with a queen kicker. Once again, it's in Holden, you play your best five hands. So Ed has a pair of eights with an ace, king, queen. And Ed takes down what amounts to about a $450 pot. And there's Ed's, uh, his rebuy there in for about 5000 And Ed's down about, I want to say about $5,000 tonight. That was his additional buy-in. Button is in seat six. That's Barry Woods. Small blind is Hun. Shaheen is actually out of the game. Big blind is Tony. Italian Tony there. That's $20. Mo folds. Ed folds. Matthew's going to limp in here with the old 8-5 of diamonds. 8-5 worked for him last time. He's going to see if it works again. And, and this is actually heads up here. We got a queen four for Tony in the big blind. And Matthew's got 8-5 of diamonds. And he's got position. Let's see what happens. And there's the eight. And Tony bets. Yeah, Tony's going to fire Whoa, right into it. 60. Raise 100 more. Wow. And Matthew's going to raise it up to 100 more. <laughs> wow. Matthew says, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so, you uh, Italian man there. <laughs> and Tony folds. That's right. You ever see that great? Well, you remind me of like I'm at home. You know, your little Italian man from Boston, which I'm going home in a couple couple weeks now. You ever see that great, great, it's great Eddie Murphy skit? I want to say it's Raw or one of them. When he's talking about, he talks about right after Rocky came out. And, you know, a little Italian man would come out of the uh, out of the movie theater and act all tough. Yeah. And it's, I think it's like a whole Juju B thing, you know, where this, uh, but it's a really funny thing. Tony actually reminds me of that. So maybe somebody on 2 plus 2 or somebody can email me and let me know what that was exactly. I think it's Eddie Murphy Raw or Eddie Murphy Delirious. Button moves over here to seat 8. I think that is Raw, Dave. Raw? Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it's absolutely hysterical. And obviously, I don't do it justice. Limped around here three or four ways. But I was just peeing in my pants when I heard that. 5-3 deuce, all clubs. Gets checked around the turn is an 8. Take, take. Tony's got the best hand here with 10 8. Gets checked around again, and the river's a 3. Now, now Tony's going to bet. Yeah, what does Ed have here? Oh, Ed's got Jack 5. Yeah, no, Jack 5. He wonders, is, is Ed going to pay him off? Tony bets 150 here. And I guess nobody pays him off here. Big Tony takes it down. Yep. We have an email here, Dave. Again, you can email us at livewiththemike.com from uh, Doug in San Diego. He says, I haven't been able to watch for the show for a while. Could Joe's passive play be attributed to being down overall in the show? Because uh, he is down big overall in the show. Yeah. I think he's talking about that hand with 7-6. Um, and I would say, yeah. I mean, obviously, and, and it's, it's definitely a mindset. If you're a losing player or if you've been losing or on a losing streak, obviously sometimes that affects your play. You become a little more passive, right. play a little more scared. Right. Um, which is obviously why if sometimes you are on a bad run of yeah. cards, take a break. Right. Get away from it. Because if you start playing it passive instead of aggressive, well, then suddenly instead of just getting bad luck, suddenly you're not playing well. Yeah, Ed's going to raise it up to 200 more here. Out of the big blind, he's got king, queen, off suit. And he is going to take it down. Now, let's bring up a point here about that hand with pocket tens against Ed with ace-king. Yeah. When Ed uh, basically bluffed Barry out of the pot. Now, because Arvin on 2 plus 2 has written, do you think Barry should have known his 10-10 was good after the flop when Ed just called the flop? Because if he had queen, queen, king, king, or ace-ace, wouldn't he have even raise the flop after flop of 4-4-5? Four, four, now, an advanced player would know that... If you had ace ace or king king, that's a good flop for you. Maybe you can smooth call. But I don't know, Dave, if uh, you know 
if Ed ever not raises with something like Ace Ace King King on that flop, do you think he's advanced enough to smooth call the flop? Um, let me ask you this though. Okay, so maybe he doesn't. You're right. Uh, he probably does raise with Ace Ace or King King, but does he necessarily raise with Queens or Jacks? He might be scared too that you have Aces or Kings. Possibly. I mean, the fact of the matter is, when he smooth calls, oh, I'm sorry. Let me come I mean, yeah, what rational person smooth calls a thousand dollars with only ace king there? Yeah. Five way action here, limped around ten deuce three with a couple clubs. If he gets checked around here, the Why turn is, the is another time? three. One, it looks like one. seat number three has got ten five, and now he's going to bat. I think the fact of the matter is that Ed outplayed Barry there, and you know maybe it's time to anoint Ed as a better player than Barry Woods. <laughs> Bad here by 80 by Matthew, and he's going to take it down. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Again, the uh, reddish brown chips are $10 chips, and the white chips are $100 chips. Now, it's interesting. The grayish green chips are $1,000 chips. And uh, yellow chips are $5 chips, and blue chips are $1 chips. Really interesting here. Matthew, you wonder if he's. He's an avid, he's never been on the show, but he's an avid okay, watcher yeah, of Live at the Bike. Right there, and if you wonder if he's been studying this show in particular for the past six or seven months, and he's finally gone to go, you know what? I think I've got a read on all these players. I'm going to come down and win some money. Well, he's going to make a raise here from the button. He's got ace, jack, and diamonds. He's going to make it 100 to go in seat three. And let's see if anyone's going to join the party with him. Tony's going to make the call there in seat nine. He has... Jack five offsuit. He's badly dominated, and here we go to the flop. All hearts ten nine three. Dominated, nominated. Look at that. Tony's got the jack of hearts in his hand. He's in great shape. And it goes check check here, and the turn's a king. Matthew didn't make a continuation bet. Tony's got a flush. Yeah. Tony's gonna bet. And I get. I mean, maybe Matthew just figured. You know what? I'm just not even gonna get involved. Yes. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I'm not even gonna get involved. And he looked down. And he goes, Oh, I got. Oh, I got a red ace and jack. Uh oh, wrong red one. Tony takes it down there with a jack flush. Again, if you think that you can come and beat these players, I mean, there have only been a couple of players, and Matthew's one of the first ones over nine months instead of come and played in the game, Dave. Yeah. Anybody can play in this game. Yep. We're going to take a look at another chip count there. Jerry in seat. It's, that's Matthew over yeah. there in seat three. Matthew. Yeah. And he's up to 8600 8, Pretty impressive. dollars there. Matthew in seat three. He's Joe up to has got uh, $8,200 there in seat five. Wow. And, uh, boy, you know, after winning that hand, he could be up a lot more. Yeah. And I think that Barry's down there. Again, it's a little bit difficult to see who started with what, but we'll try to get you that information as soon as it comes in. I mean, I'll tell you, we have about, I want to say, thirty-five to $40,000 on the table, though. Tony's going to raise it here from the button. He raises to 60. Yeah. Seat eight and seat nine both From call. I'm not, I'm not and seat and uh, Ed's gonna be in there with king three off suit. I oh, am. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Matthew's okay. gonna come and play here with ten okay. seven off suit. Yep. Yeah. Well, Matthew's not afraid to see flops, especially multi way where he thinks he might be able to win a big big pot. So here we go. It's already worked action. once for him. And again, I believe that Barry is the razor here with ten nine suited. Queen five four on the flop. So let's see if Barry makes a continuation. Are threes still good? Yeah, it looks like it. Hun with threes is still good here. Yeah, but you're really looking for a set there, a set or nothing. Let's see if Barry makes a continuation bet. If he makes a big bet here, he could take it down, Dave. Well, I, I imagine, I mean, he always does. Why not continue it there? He's going to bet 240. And, and is... Hun's in the spot where he's the first one to call. He's got all those players behind right. him. There's no way he can call. And he's bet about half, I want to say a little over half the size of the pot, and that might be enough. And this is the only thing. I was going to say, you know, Ed is one of the most, he could call you with King 3. Right. And you'd have no idea where you're at. Right. Right. And the problem with 10-9 there, as opposed to raising something with Ace-King, is that that's not going to probably win a showdown at the end if you miss everything. Right. You know? you got to keep firing. Yeah. The uh, button moves over there to Han and C8. Is the Joe, is Sean going to play? If they're not, let's get some people. This is how Joe always plays. This is Chris and Matt Frank. The button's going to move over here really? to seat 8. I mean, let's have a cool game. Let's have a good game. I'll go find Jesus and tell him to come. Getting word blocked. Yes, Ed wants to go 
find his Zeus and get him to play in the game. Well, we're all for that, Ed. Hey, why not? So tell Donna to tell him to do that. Get the more. only problem with Ed is, though, he'll leave the table for two hours yeah. trying to do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ed might sit down in the, in the uh, Mexican poker section. Play that. <laughs> You never know. Limp, limp, limp here. We got pocket kings over there for Tony in seat nine in the small blind. And he's going to race. And he's jack for a Barry. Look at this. He only races it to 40, Dave. The minimum race. Well, he's a limit hold'em player. Wow. Somebody's got to remind him that he's allowed to bet more. Yep. Ed calls with a weak ace. Alan calls with 8-6. Oh, well, why wouldn't you call? It's only 20 And, and Tony's going to take kings yeah. here five ways. Kind of surprised. It's yeah, a $200 pop. Yeah. Do you think he was going to drive anybody out with that bet? Here we go to the flop. Queen, nine, four. And I got to tell you, kings are still good here. Well, that's not, I mean, hey, if you're going to play it soft with kings, that's a pretty good flop for it, huh? The only thing that really scares you is somebody does jack ten. He's going to bet 200, and no one has hit any part of this. No, and I mean, there's nothing out there for anybody. This is one of those times if you're buried, just get rid of it. Don't even go for it. <laughs> you got nothing. Come on, buddy. Get rid of it. You got no draw. Only one overcard to the top pair. Why do I always have shit? <laughs> and you have always good. <laughs> you know, have the shit. Well, that was great. <laughs> That's classic. Uh, and everybody folds in Tony. Let's see if Tony will show the, uh, the cards. No, he doesn't show. Good for him. Barry wanted five. We wanted to give him five bucks to uh, show the hand. This is pretty exciting, actually. I, I hear Ray, our cameraman, he uh, he brought his boyfriend to work. Why did you raise? Why did you call? That's a little insider joke. <laughs> the butt moves over here to seat nine. Dave, when you said that, the guy who's sitting in on us in the booth, it looked like he was going to kill you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's easy. It's easy to uh, you it's know. It's easy to do it when you have the microphone. Exactly. exactly. Raised here by seat eight with King Jack off suit. Seat nine is going to call with ace two of clubs. Well, the guy next to me understands. He understands it's not against him. We've got to be able to rip the people we work with. Right. <laughs> Otherwise, what's the fun? <laughs> Three-way action here. Ten five four on the flop. And again, I believe Tony was the pre-flop rate. Oh, excuse me, Hun was the pre-flop rate with King Jack. But look at this. Ed's going to come out and bet 200 from early position with ace four. And you know what? His hand's good. Hun doesn't get involved. But Tony calls with a gut shot wheel draw. And he is dominated. He needs to catch a three or backdoor clubs. The turn's a deuce. Oh, he's picked up more outs here. He needs another deuce, and he's okay, huh? Oh, look at that. <laughs> Ed's going to bet 200 here. Yes. And uh, Tony quickly calls again. And the river's a four, and Ed makes trips. And Ed's going to bet here again. He bets 400. And look at this. Tony's going to move the rest all in. Excuse me, he's going to call. Looked like he moved the rest all in, but he called with ace deuce all the way, Dave, with bottom pair. And Ed takes down the pot with, with ace four. Ed versus Tony. It's like one of those classic Japanese films. You know, where the monster fought the monster, the beetle, the giant beetle versus, uh, you know, King Kong. <laughs> Mothra? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was, it was actually funny. Barry was nice enough to give us those uh, Christmas those Christmas gifts. Yeah. And uh, so I, I call my wife to tell her how nice Barry Woods is. And the first thing she says to me is, Okay, uh, well, okay, yeah. Is he hitting on you? Is he gay? <laughs> and then she goes, wait a second, are you gay? I know <laughs> no. I, but, you know, I think it's the a wife's greatest fear, though. But it's going to move over there, seat nine. <laughs> <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with being gay. At all. <laughs> I have numerous, numerous homosexual friends. 10, and 10, 3 here on the flop. We're heads up between Ed and Matthew. And they did not chop it. Matthew did not chop. And Ed's got the best hand here with 9-3. Turns to 10. And Ed says, I made a full house. And he's going to bet $10 here. 
I don't think Matthew's going to get involved here. And that's actually below the minimum. You have to actually bet $20. That's right. Game. But it works. And he shows the 9 3. There it is. I think you over bet it, Dad. Thank you. Gave away the strength in your hand. With 10 bucks? Put in 200. He would have called it. He's a safe player. And Ed takes it down. The button moves over to Ed. Oh, I better go check on uh, twenty-seven. I'll play my there button. There it is. Go check on him. They're gonna call. They're gonna call. They're gonna call. Uh, two, five, Tony's over there in seat nine. So it's Friday. Is it double fish night for Bart? Uh, I think I might take the night off tonight, dude. Another I, night I, off? I had a rough day today at work. I was telling you, I had. I, I was at the point where I was having my worst day ever, as a, uh, you know, since I've really? been playing here. I gotta give you credit, though. You, we wouldn't know it. No, I, I don't. That, those types of things don't this. don't really. Yeah. You, you know me. They don't. I don't really yeah, get emotional. Well, well, it comes with the job. You know, being yeah. a professional poker player, obviously, you're gonna have some bad days. Yeah. Now, Hun's gonna raise it up here with Ace Ten off suit. He's like he made it 80. Oftentimes, and people, uh, you know, wear it on their sleeves, though. Tony's going to call here with king four off suit. And Ed's going to come in here, and he's going to call with queen six off suit. And Alan's going to call with queen four suited. So Hun is the preflop raiser to, I, I guess it was 90. $360 pot going on the flop. Queen Jack three rainbow. Allen's got top pair here, but Ed does as well. Yeah, Allen's got the backdoor flush draw, uh, and in all likelihood, if this goes to the river and it, either player pairs up, it'll probably be a chop. Well, it gets it gets checked to Ed. Hun didn't put the continuation bet in there with Ace Ten. It looks like Hun's really playing it passively. He's got a gut shot to the king. Yeah. Ed bets and Allen calls, and we're heads up. Queen four against Queen six. Turns a king. Well, there's the free roll there for Allen with the queen four. It's yeah. either going to be a chop or probably Allen's going to win it, and the river's an eight, and we're going to chop it up. Yeah. They both have a pair of queens with a king, jack, yeah. eight. There you go. Choppy, chop, chop. Now, Ed could have won if he hit a six there. Right, right. Right, but uh, chances are it was going to be a chop, and uh, Allen was on a club free roll. Club free roll, exactly. Nice. Got to like that. Yeah. Interesting there, Hun actually would have made his straight there, the gut shot straight on the turn. That's right, right Had away. Right there. away. Surprising he didn't throw a bet in there. You know, when you have ace 10 and the flop comes out, jack queen, it's not a great flop for you, but it's not the worst flop in the world, right? You can bet it and see where everybody's at. Right. Well, who got lucky? I mean, I had the six, you had the four. You got lucky. Of course you got lucky. He got lucky. And the button's going to move over there to seat number three. No, flush shooting count. I was lucky This game, hey, Barry, you're ahead about you that Joe Wynn's going to come back into the game in the big blind. Got about an hour and a half left, or an hour or so left in the game. Oh, really? Yeah, everybody is. This is his girlfriend is in Vietnam. Yeah, Barry's going to limp in here in early position. 8 9 offsuit. Tony's going to come in with Queen Deuce offsuit. I wonder if he plays these types of hands and limit holds them. Well, I just answered my own question, Dave. <laughs> my goodness. A lot of multi way pots here. Well, the thing about limit hold them is actually playing inferior pre flop hands hurts more because you really need to play tighter in that game. Well, there are less implied odds, yeah, obviously. Yeah. This game is all about implied odds. Six way action here. Limped around. Flop comes out 10 5 6 here on the flop. <laughs> and look at nobody's got a 10 though, but Joe does have a 7. And Ed also has a. I'm sorry, Joe has a 6. And uh, right now that looks good. And we got a bet here by. By Ed here with 7 5. I think he, he's bet 200, Dave, into a pot that I want to say is only about $120. And Jill calls with top with second pair there, and uh, he shares Ed's kicker, so Ed's going to need to catch a five here. Turn is an eight, but Ed picks up a flush draw with a straight draw, yeah, and, and he goes check check, and the river's a jack. You wonder if Ed is going to fire here, and if he does, can no. he get you off the hands? Just goes check check. Okay, six is good. Ed picked up a lot of outs there on the turn. Now, Joe obviously had, had the same straight outs, but Ed also had the flush ones there. Now, it's interesting here. Ray's friend, obviously, I was saying in jest, his friend John is actually uh, went to school in Boulder, Colorado. And when I drove cross-country from New York out to Los Angeles, I stopped in Boulder. And I got to tell you, 
it is one of the most fantastic places in the world. There was a good chance I actually met a couple of friends out there. I mean, just met some people out there. They were so nice, I almost stayed in Boulder. It was such a cool place. Well, Boulder, of course, University of Colorado, when I was at Syracuse, Dave, we had a joint program abroad in London with the University of Colorado, so I lived with some Colorado people for a couple of years. Yeah. Those guys really know how to drink up there in the mountains, i got to tell you. Yeah, I mean, their football team sucks, but... <laughs> like, Syracuse's football team is any better? Come on. Uh, hey, it's basketball season. Keep playing. <laughs> We had a raise here by Tony with Ace King, and Joe's called with Ace Ooh. Jack. So Tony's got him dominated. And Ace comes out here. He can be in trouble. Queen, deuce, deuce on the flop. Tony's going to bet 200 here. And, I mean, does Joe really want to get involved with this? Well, interesting here that Tony would do the continuation bet. No. no. I like the play by Tony. Not a bad flop for Ace King at all. I can understand And the button's going to move over there to action Joe win in C5. And uh, I think Shaheen just got up from the table permanently, Dave, but he left his chips there. there you Sometimes go. players, I mean, it's almost like it's a thing where, like, players will know, oh, the poor man will just pick my chips up, and they will. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I mean, I gotta be. I, I don't. I'm never comfortable doing that. I mean, I don't want to no. leave. Right. You know, leave six or seven hundred dollars just sitting there. How about six or seven thousand dollars? I see the yeah, level of this game. I mean, are you kidding me? Limped around here. Four way action. Eighty dollar pot to the flop. Ace eight three here. Talk about an uncoordinated board. But look at this. Barry Woods has got top two, and he checks it from up front. And that's one of the rare cases where I don't mind checking top two. And look at this seventy dollar bet here by Matthew as a bluff. And Barry just calls, but he's out of position, and Matthew's not going to fire here again. I just don't see it. Turn is a six. Yeah, i, I got to be honest. I don't mind the check one more time from Barry here. Check, I, check. River's a nine. All right, now you fire. Make well, it look it, like a bluff. But it's out of position, though, Dave. I mean... No, I understand what you're saying, but it's such an uncoordinated board, you got to hope the other guy has an ace. You know what I mean? I mean, if he shows any real strength, he knows the guy's going to go anywhere. So, well, let's see if he bluffs one more time. I mean, oh. Barry made as much bad as much as he's going to make on that hand. Yep. Uh, Hun is going to get up from the table. Now, those are the $1,000 chips right there. I don't know if we can flash back over to Barry Woods there. The grayish-green chips. There it is. Yep. $1,000 chips. We weren't talking about Tony's Wait, it hair. Seems like, it seems like the world is conspiring against Isaac tonight, Dave. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Murphy's Law. <laughs> he looks like he's having a lot. Of, he's like having a lot of fun over there with that joystick, though. Yeah. Well, well, Garo's having a lot of fun. I'm not sure if I. <laughs> we should have like a little contest, you know? <laughs> be a be a uh, live the bike techie for a day. Right. If you win. Barry See Woods, if you can do it. Barry Woods is going to raise it up here. He raised it. $50 with King Deuce, and Alan's going to call him the blind. And we're heads up. Pocket three is against King Deuce. Now, Barry's almost definitely going to continue if, if he uh, if, if Alan checks to him. And how does Alan, I mean, how is he going to play pocket threes out of position now? Queen, nine, four on the flop. Check and fold. And Alan tells Barry, I have a pair. Look at this, though. Barry's going to check. Well, turns a jack, and it gets worse and worse for Alan. Alan checks again, and Barry checks again. Why is Barry checking? Hey, look at this. The river's a 10, and Barry makes a straight. Yeah, but I just don't understand why Barry checking the whole no, way. I don't either. What, do you believe, Alan? I have a pair? Now he bets 120. <laughs> what can pocket threes beat now? And, uh... He showed I, him the deuce. Uh, yeah, he did. He showed him the deuce. <laughs> he showed him the deuce. You kind of wondered if the guy had pocket deuces. <laughs> and he says he had two of them. There it is. I always, I always kind of find it, I find it humorous that these guys would uh, lie to each other when obviously you can just go home and check the archives. I don't know if Alan watches the show though, Dave. I have no idea. Hey, if you guys like this show or you like any of the shows, you can check them out in the archives. All you got to do is click on the live at the bike, uh, live at the bike .com. Top left corner, you click on the archives, and for fourteen ninety five a month, you get every show we've ever done. We're talking like sixteen, seventeen hundred hours of content.
Right. Howard Letterer, Holden Video, Barry Greenstein Video, Greg Raymer, Kathy Liebert, you name it, they've been here. Yep. Not to mention Barry Wood's mentor, the great Shirley Rosario. Barry's going to raise it up here to 100 with pocket nines, and Matthew calls out of position here with ace queen, and here we go, heads up. 10 3 deuce. That's not a bad flop at all for pocket nines, now, especially Matthew, in position. You know, if you watch the show a lot, he should know all of these players, like we said. And Barry bets here 100. So you know that Barry's going to make this bet automatically with any two cards, but it does not look like Matthew's going to get involved. Mm. Well, it's interesting, though, Barry didn't bet against uh, Allen. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> Once again, if you have any questions or comments for us, please email us at liveatthebike.com. We do read them. We do appreciate it. Dave, to continue that conversation about your gayness, My gayness, didn't you tell me one time that your wife thought you were gay when you first met her? Yeah, it was interesting. I actually met her. We were both doing. Uh, we were both in plays in Hollywood, <laughs> and uh, she was actually playing like an 18-year-old confused bisexual, and I was playing an 18-year-old kid that was coming out ah. and being gay. And I was such a good actor that, ah, I see. that not only did she, but everybody thought that I was gay. And it wasn't until actually the director was hitting on me one day, and I kept saying, I, go, <laughs> I actually go, I go, hey, I go, I'm not gay. <laughs> and she looked at me, and she goes, you're not gay? And, and, and that's, you know, three play action. six years later, here we are. Limped around, king seven four here on the flop. Tony's got middle pair, gets checked around, the turn's a nine. And now action Joe Wynn's going to bet. He's got a gut shot to the jack. He's going to bet 80. Tony's going to call. Tony's calling with third again, pair. It's just so hard to put these guys on hands. Like, if you want to try to bluff again on the river, it's just you have no idea what they have. No clue. The river's a king. You have no clue. But Joe's going to try to bluff again. He bets 120. I mean, to me, i got to tell you, I almost, I almost take bluffing out of my arsenal against Tony and against Ed. And, I, and the, the, the one weapon I put in my arsenal for the night is I will bet for value and I will raise for value all night long. Look at this. Tony makes the call. And uh, Joe has queen high, and Tony's going to win here with a seven. Tony's trying to figure out. Yeah. Joe just turned his hand over, which is commonly a thing that some players will try to do to make it look like they have something. Yeah. Uh, Dave, a lot of times if you have a low pocket pair and you somehow get counterfeit by the end of the board, Say, you know, the board reads 7, 7, 8, 8, you know, and 9. And you pocket deuces. And you've got pocket deuces, and you turn it over two pair. Right. right. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you're not lying. But i got to tell you, bluffing Tony and bluffing a player like Ed, you're just not going to make a lot of money doing that. Yeah. Um, but betting for value? Hmm. That'll work all night long. So the director was really hitting on you? Yeah, he was a nice guy. This guy, this, the director of the play, was was uh, hitting on me. I mean, kind of in jest, but he was hitting on me, and I was always, you know, joking back to him, saying, "Daniel, I'm not gay." And that was when uh, you know, Melissa overheard it, said that. Actually, at our wedding, my, my our best man actually put that in the speech. Ah, limped around here, five way action, five deuce deuce here on the flop. Looks like we got four or five suited for Alan. It's the best hand. Yeah. Gets checked around. Turn is an eight. And that's the one thing with Alan. Alan never puts money in unless he's really, you know. And now he's now he's going to bet. He doesn't even know if he's good. The eight happened to miss everybody, so he still is good. Yep. Uh, Alan's play is probably polar opposite of, say, a guy like Corporation Mike, right? Yeah. And, and to me, I mean, Alan, as much as I do like Alan as well, he's really a nice guy. Class act. He's obviously not a professional poker player. He's here for fun. Um, he just plays the game a little too passive to be a consistent winner. Button's going to move over there to seat two. Yeah, and, and one thing I will say about Boulder, Colorado, and I'll leave it alone after this, is if you've never been there, check it out. It is just such a cool place. I mean, it's a lot of fun there. Limp, limp here. Four-way action. King four, Jack here comes on the flop. 
Well, seat six, uh, I want to say uh, Barry there. He's got a king, uh, king nine, and he's going to bet it. Yeah, he's going to bet here. 70. Top pair. He's going to bet 70. And Tony's going to call. He's got jack five. Wow. Second Middle pair. pair, no kicker. Yeah, once again, it's hard to put somebody on the hands. Yeah. You know, I mean, you go, well, okay, does he have a king, queen 10? Does he have a jack? Does he have a king? Who knows? And look at this. Like I said, what if a five comes here on the turn? Oh, there you go. <laughs> and Barry's going to check. <laughs> and let's see what Tony does here. I mean, it's just so unpredictable. And he bets 200. And Barry calls. And Tony really should bet big here on the river. Oh, the river's a nine, Dave. Justice, oh, well, huh? This could get ugly. This could get ugly. Because <laughs> there's no flush out there. Now, somebody had queen 10. That's the only straight possible. Barry's going to bet only 200. And Tony only calls. Oh, man. King oh, nine. and Barry's probably kicking himself in the ass there. <laughs> He knows he could have won a big pot. Well, Tony, it doesn't look like he has that much left. but Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, well, he's got about 800, I want to say, still. Yeah. Tony's not throwing away two pair, though. Oh, man. I mean, you can't blame him, because obviously he doesn't know what we know. He doesn't know he has two pair. All right. Great turn and a great river. And once again, live at thebike.com, we air every Monday through Friday from 6 to 9 Pacific time. Obviously, this being Friday's show, we'll be off for a couple days, but you can catch us next Monday at 6 p.m. Pacific time. <laughs> limp, limp here. And the pot's going to be limped around. Hey, how's your Hooters girl going, Bart? We'll get to this after right, this hand. Jack 3-7 okay. here on the flop. <laughs> and we got a bet here by Matt with 7-10, middle pair. I love it. Well, Barry's got 8-7. Hey, it's Matthew betting now. I know. I'll wait my turn. And it was just us two? Oh. So Matthew okay. bets here, and it's up to Barry. Does he really want to get involved here with 8-7? Well, second pair doesn't do it. And he's going to fold. And is Tony going to call it bottom pair? He could. Well, he's I, I mean, guaranteed he could. This is not a definite lay down for him. <laughs> there it is. He makes the call. Yeah, like I said, Tony's here. He's got he's got a lot of money. He's here to have a good time. He's here to gamble. And you know what? Playing proper poker is not always fun. Turns a jack. Does that scare Matthew at all? Probably not. Look at this, though. Tony's going to bet. Yeah. <laughs> Look at Matthew. Matthew's kind of like, what? He bets what? 700 here. Yeah, the second jack can't scare you because the guy at the first jack is going to be hit. He's, he's lost anyway. But the thing is, is that Tony looked like he was going to muck his hand, and now he's made a bluff bet here on the turn. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. And Matthew says it just doesn't make any sense, but do you want to get involved here with this type of bet? The problem is... At least he says you were going to fold the flop. But you like the jack. <laughs> the jack of spades. Hey, he's got a flush draw now, right? I mean, what is that? I mean, the only thing you could think of is maybe Tony has a seven, and now he goes, okay, Matthew doesn't have, a, doesn't have the jack, and he thinks his seven is good. And if Matthew puts him on a 7, he's got to go, is my 10 any good then? I know I'm taking this to another level here. And but look at this. Matthew says, you know what? You can just have it. <laughs> <laughs> you can have it. I'll pick my battles. Yeah. Wow. Uh, the Hooters girl kind of had a little bit of a falling out, Dave, but I'm, but I'm working on it. Okay, okay. I mean, who would have a falling out with me? It's obviously on her end. Clearly. Yeah. Clearly, clearly. She's probably bipolar. <laughs> Live at the bike, keeping it real, politically incorrect. Always. Bam. But who's over here to seat six? Hey, you know it was my birthday yesterday? You no, know, you never even mentioned it, huh? I didn't mention it. I, I wanted to kind of keep it low, low down. So why are you mentioning it now? I felt like it. <laughs> no particular reason. Joe Wynn's just going to limp in here with ace jack. After the fact, I can make you all feel bad for not wishing you happy birthday that way. Four-way action here. Put the Jewish guilt trip on you. Seven, six, five here on the flop, and it looks like somebody's flopped a straight. It's Mo. No, excuse me. It's seat nine. Tony's flopped a straight with four, eight. Oh, wait a minute, and Mo. oh, excuse me, I thought Mo had flopped a straight, too. He hasn't. He just got a pair of sixes. Tony's going to bet now. I forgot Mo was even in the game. Where's he been? 
$120. Look at this, $120 bet by Tony, and Mo raises to 240 Well, you don't put Tony on a seven here, and he probably thinks that his six is good. Well, yes, yes, thank you. Tony flopped a straight. Yeah. He does not have the nut straight, obviously. No, you, obviously, anytime you've got an 8 4 or a and 9 Tony's 5. Tony's going to re raise. You cannot flop the nut straight. Tony re raises. Makes it 320. And I think that Mo probably, anytime these guys show any strength. And there you go, he folds. Yeah, nice lay down there. Goes back to picking his teeth. Yeah. <laughs> well, Tony will, Tony will bluff, and he'll fire once. Right, right. But if he re raises you, he usually has it. Although I will say I played stud high, stud, stud hold, not stud hold him, stud, seven card stud with Tony there in seat nine, and he check raised me on third street, fourth street, fifth street, and sixth street. I had trips, and all he had was one pair the entire way, and he check raised me each and every time. And then on the on the on the river, he checked to me, and I was like, because I didn't fill up, I was like, I'm not stupid, I'm not gonna bet again. Right, right. <laughs> So I just checked it down. But he check raised me literally four times. You tell him about the room we shared at the wind, did you? New player coming in is seat eight. And that's is that Gus? Yes. Gus is playing in this game? Wow. G U S Gus. Queen eight seven here on the flop. And I think that Ed's flopped the straight. And he checked it, Dave. Turn is another eight, but no one has another eight. So Ed checked the straight. And he checked it again. What does, he, does he want somebody to catch another queen to come out so he really can't bet? And uh, Alan's going to make a... He's got a He's got a straight flush draw. He's got an open-ended straight flush draw. Yeah. Nine, ten of spades. And let's see what Ed does. Wow, and Ed just check calls, Dave. Unbelievable. And the river's a six, and Allen's made a straight, but, but Ed has a straight. higher straight. Oh, this is interesting. What's going to happen here? Is Ed going to push? Come on, Ed. Ed, sh Ed checked, and Allen bet 400. Ed checked the nuts all three streets. And Ed folds. Oh, excuse me. You know what, Dave? I I'm not looking at it correctly. Ed did not have a straight. Look at that. Look at the ball. Oh. Ed's smarter than we are. I just took your word for it. I wasn't even paying attention. I'm looking, I'm like... <laughs> Yeah, that might be one of those Isaac straights. There you go. Yeah. I mean, the interesting thing is, I'm like looking at the board. I wasn't really paying attention because you kept saying he had a straight. And I'm going, well, I don't know. Yeah, I know. He didn't have a straight. It looked like he had a straight. He had a gut shot to the nine. There you go. Once again, we are live, folks. We're unedited, that, unscripted folks. here. And obviously, we make mistakes once in a while. Right. You know, our technicians rarely make mistakes, but once in a while, we do. Sorry. Good. How about yourself? Our technicians never make mistakes. No, we're going to take Bart out back and flog him later. Buttons moved over here to seat one. And you know, I wonder one thing here. Now, Moe's sitting there picking his teeth, okay? Now, I know his wife watches this, okay? And this this show might go to England on the Poker Channel, right? The L.A. Poker Channel. The whole world's going to see see Mo picking his teeth. Now, Barry raised to 120 preflop, and Allen called out of the blind with queen nine. Barry's got pocket eights. So flop comes ace four queen. Barry bets 100, and Allen check races with queen nine. I've never seen him make that move, Dave. Second wow. Part. Hey, let's give Alan some credit there. This is, I mean, obviously he has the best hand, but uh, he gets Barry out of it. Well, the funny thing is, is that I, I, I don't necessarily know if it's the right play to make a move with that hand against Barry, because would Barry fold? I mean, if you're going to check race with Queen Nine there, I think the purpose of that with that board is maybe to try to get somebody to fold pocket kings. Right, yeah, but it, either way, you're check raising instead of calling. Right. No. And anytime Allen is raising, I'm happy. And raising without the nuts, that is. You know right, what I mean? Right. Showing some aggressiveness. You never know. Hey, an eight might come out on the on the turn. You might lose a big pot. I mean, I just, I like the fact I like to see him a little aggressive there. Deuces for Joe Wynn. Action, Joe Wynn. Again, a couple you can, of ducks. You can email us at live at the bike dot com. I just limped around here. Five-way action. Ace-queen-eight here on the flop. 
come on for you. Check around. You're the host. You got all these problems to worry about. You turn is about a three ace. here. Look around you. See what's happening. <laughs> so the board is ace queen <laughs> eight three. Yeah, I think Barrett's the best hand here with eight nine, huh? Yes, he does. Now this, I'm now, gonna read the boards from now on. Okay, I hope you don't mind. Okay. <laughs> now Joe's gonna bet with pocket deuces. He's gonna bet one seven. That's an odd bet. That means he's got some. And that's a big bet because the pot is a hundred dollars here. Yeah. And, and he gets Barry to fold the best hand. Well, you know what? You got to look at it. Joe is up front, and he he might not have checked the ace, but he might have checked the queen, and now he's going to bet the queen. I mean, that's how he kind of played it. So what have you been up to? Dave, we've got a little under an hour left in the show. I hope everyone's enjoying their Friday night. Of course, we stream live cash games every Monday through Friday from uh, 6 to 9 o'clock Pacific time. Yeah. And uh, you can check us out, actually, on a 24-hour repeat roll until the next day. So you can watch this show all the way up until 4 p.m. tomorrow. Now, Gus is a pretty solid player in C8. Yeah. Um, now, a lot of times when people play a little above their heads, you know, bankroll-wise, I, I have no idea what his bankroll is. But a lot of times they will uh, tighten up and play a little scared. It'd be interesting to see how he plays. Now we had a raise here by Ed with pocket deuces. He would, and uh, Matthew called with pocket fives. And Tony's in there with jack eight. It's a three hundred dollar pot. And look at this. Tony hits top pair. Tony checks the top pair. Yeah, Tony likes to check raise sometimes. Ed's gonna bet two hundred. And is, does this put Matthew in a tough spot here with fives? Does he want to get involved with somebody behind him when Ed could be basically making this bet with absolutely anything? Well, he's not going to get involved. And Tony just check calls. Wow. Turns at three. And now Tony's going to bet 200. And Ed calls. And the river is a seven. And this is one of those cases where Ed's deuces doesn't even play. Does, does he realize it, though? Oh, it goes check. Tony checks, and Ed checks behind him. Ed plays the board. Yes. He plays sevens and threes with the jack kicker. And obviously, three pair does not do anything for you. Once again, in holding it's your best five-card hand, unlike in, like, say, a game in Omaha where you must use two cards from your hand. Actually, I was playing a great game last night. We played a game of uh, a mixed game. We played BOT, uh, Padugie, Deuce to Seven, Triple Draw, and Omaha, Eight or Better. And uh, played it pretty short. I mean, three or four handed for about two and a half hours. A lot of fun. I got to tell you, sometimes it's fun to mix it up when you you know you're stuck playing stud high low or limit hold them all the time, or even no limit hold them. Well, I think the bike is one of the only places that really uh, spreads stud high low at these levels, isn't it, Dave? The pretty, world yeah, world. pretty much. It's 80. We got Getting a raise, $80 yeah. raise here by Ed. Pocket nines. Joe Wynn's going to call with a six of diamonds on the button in seat five. Tony's going to come in with looks like 10 seven up suit. So Ed's got a real hand here. $250 pot going three ways. Eight, five, eight. Not a bad flop for pocket nine. Not at all. Ooh. Now Tony's I got a gut shot to the six, and that's two hundred. I love two hundred. Actually, five five thousand more. This is one of those things that Joe's got to know the player he's playing against. There's no point in trying to make a move on these guys because if they don't have a hand, okay, you're going to get it off the hand. But if they have any kind of hand, you're not going to bluff them off it. Yeah. And again, you know, if Tony, if 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 Joe tries to make a move with a six. You know, Ed could call it all the way down with ace king, ace queen, ace jack, or maybe even ace ten. Exactly, and that's you know? the reason why you've got to pick and pick your spots. You know, you're playing against a, a, a player more like Mo, or even a player like say Gus in seat eight. You can make a move on a player like that because they will put you on an eight and throw their hand away, maybe. Oh, that was good. I give you got ten points. I appreciate it. That's good. Take a look at another chip count here. Well, Barry's got 9,000. Is Joe Wynn the big winner tonight? I, I, asked I believe Joe yeah, Wynn is. Yeah. Yeah. He won a big, you know, big $6,000 pot early. Well, we'll get to see what he started with. Uh, and uh, Matthew's got 8,400. And uh, it's got about 6,100 there. Yeah. Matthew's having a pretty good night, too. He's up a couple of thousand so far. I think he started with about 7,000. Seven, okay, so he's up 14. No, because we burned those chips. Now, yep, yeah, like you said, Barry raised here with ace-eight of hearts. He made it 70 to go. 
And this is one of those things, when Ed calls your raise, you have no idea what he has. Yeah, he actually has the same hearts, but lower hearts. And Joe calls a queen jack. Here we go to the flop. Well, there's the eight. eight but there's two six, pair. Four. Oh, wow, Ed's got two pair. He's got bottom two pair, and Barry's got an ace. And you know it's funny? Since Ed showed the bluff earlier, I think Barry might pay him off this time. Ed checks. Now, I would have loved to have seen Ed bet out right there, the way that this night's been going. As opposed to, but he's checked it from up front. So well, what's interesting is, I don't know if Ed gets, if Barry can get away from this hand now. Well, yeah, but if Ed makes a big check raise here. Remember, though, Ed bluffed him before and showed the bluff. And look at this, a $300 bet by Barry, and Ed's raised it to 1200 And this is going to be interesting, folks. And most of the time when Ed shows strength, and, and that's what Barry's probably listening to that in his, in his ear, most of the time when, when Ed shows strength, he has it, but Ed has shown Barry a bluff. Yeah, but has he check-raised bluffed yet? Oh, I don't know if, I don't know if Barry's going to that, that kind of thinking. But, I mean, I think you should make that thinking, right? You should, right. Has but, Ed ever check-raised bluff? But in this case, you know, I mean... i got to be honest with you. My ace-eight would go out the window right now as quick as possible. But Barry's going to make the call, it looks like. Yeah, you know what, though? Oh, wait a minute. Not yet. It looked like he... you got to be careful with that, Dave, when you push chips in, yeah. in the front like that. He's still thinking about it. Heads up, you can get away with it a little while. No, I'm not... I don't know... Yeah, I'll give you a hundred. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you a hundred. Show me a card. Yeah, but what does he do for that tip? He shakes it. And, and give Barry credit for thinking about this. But, you know, Ed has planted that seed, right. that, that bluff seed. You know, I can bluff. I mean, I got to tell you, an hour and a half ago, Barry would have mucked this in a second. But now he's got to really think about it. cheap on me now. Come on. You know, is Ed is Ed full of crap with maybe a couple of diamonds? I gotta tell you, the way that Barry Woods is running, I, I gotta tell you, maybe an eight comes out here in the turn. He makes the call. Here we go to the turn. There's he turns an eight. It's an eight on the turn. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh this could go. All the money could go in. The only thing that's a saving grace for Ed here. And Ed comes out and bets here. He bets a thousand. Now the oh, only man, the only saving grace for Ed here is the fact of the matter that it and is the third diamond. Barry just calls. Well, he just third calls. Diamond. And the river's a deuce. Oh, man. And Ed looks like he's going to bet 1,100 here. And Barry's going to call it. And he doesn't even like calling. He thinks maybe he's beat. And Barry's going to take it down there with ace eight. He made the wrong call in the flop, but i got to tell you, Barry Woods runs lucky, Dave. He's the luckiest guy in the world. I mean, talk about 6-7 against Kenna James with a 10 counterfeiting the pair on the end a couple of months ago. The guy lives a blessed life. You know what I mean? I tell you, when I die and I come back, I want to be Barry Woods my I mean, life. he's like 50 years old. Don't you want to look like? He's a good-looking guy for like 50, isn't he? I mean, amazing there. And that pot was about $7,500. Yeah, six to 7000 Huge pot there. Yeah. Barry Woods takes it down. And I got to tell you, Barry actually was a little worried. He thought he might be up against a set of sixes or a set of fours. Yeah, or a flush. Or a flush. Yeah. Now, if it were the eight of clubs or the eight of spades that had come out, maybe Barry would have thrown in a little bit of a raise. Right. Wow. But Ed was betting enough that he didn't really need to. I, I mean, I think he was scared that maybe he was up against the set. Even on the river, he, he kind of reluctantly threw in the 1100. Wow. And, and Barry's going to... called it. Yeah, Barry's going to raise it up here. It's a 120 with ace, queen, and diamonds. We'll see what happens. You know what? It's good karma. The guy gives us all Christmas baskets, and boom, there's the eight on the river on the turn. Unbelievable stuff. Ace, queen, and diamonds, and it does not look like he's going to get any play here. Wow. Just incredible stuff. But i got to give Barry credit at least for thinking about it. And then on, on the turn in the river, he almost reluctantly was calling, thinking Ed might have a set. Yeah, but why on earth did he call, did he call the check raise on the flop? Yeah, I don't. I mean, I mean what can you beat? Why, what can you beat? do that? You know? Unbelievable. What can you beat on and, the flop? And it's going to rebuy for 5000 behind. And Barry might be the big winner tonight. Again? Ugh. So it's almost like once a month, Barry's the big winner here. Yeah. Jeez. Incredible. And that was another huge pot there. Wow. Yeah. Three players. I saw that eight. I knew I was going to hear, hear an eruption out of you. Limped around here. 
And Moe's got top two pair here. Yeah, 70. he's in good shape. And he checked, he checked it to Tony, and Tony's going to bet 70, and Mo just calls. Tony's got a gut shot wheel draw, turns a seven. That's a scary card for Mo, and it goes check, check, and the river's a king. And now Mo's going to bet. Yeah, he's, I don't know about a one, bet one, here one. either, Dave. Why not? It's against uh, Tony. You might get called by a six. Yeah. I don't mind the bet here at all. If Tony checked the turn, he doesn't have a straight. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's not going to check the turn if he's got a straight. If he's well, got I think, uh, yeah, and Tony isn't that deep, so I guess it's right, really exactly. opening yourself up that much. And Tony might call you with one pair. Yeah. Like I said, I mean, in this game, you've got to value bet. Tony, you've got to value bet Ed. It's a way to make money here. Yeah. Oh, phenomenal action here at Live at the Bike. As always, Dave. And we do this every night during the week, Monday through Friday, from 6 to 9 Pacific time. And again, if you want to watch every show that we've ever done, you can check out the archives by clicking on the archives banner in the upper left-hand corner of your screen at liveatthebike.com. I actually just bought subscriptions for my uh, niece and nephew for Christmas. And Makes how old are they? Five and six, respectively? Uh, actually, six and nine. Ah, I see. Makes a great stocking stuffer. Never too young to get these kids into poker, you know? Look at this. Gus raised here. I, I mean, he, he's raised with King 8, Dave. Talking about we thought he might tighten up at a higher uh, higher level. He raised with King 8. He gets called in two spots. Wow, he doesn't play that. He plays tighter in the smaller games. Right. Ace, Jack, 9, and Tony's got a pair. Let's see if Gus going to continue to bet, though. Well, Tony doesn't have a pair. Tony has top pair. Yeah. You could... You could you could uh, literally start a fire on this table, and Tony would go nowhere. Well, Gus, he's going to make a continuation bet. He bets 240 That's here. 240. And Tony's like going to raise. And I think I think Gus got his answer. He's going to pull a little Hollywood acting job here. Yeah, he doesn't want to muck right away. But he's got no pair, no draw. He's really up a creek here. Yeah, we've never seen him raise with that with King 8 like in a 3 to 5 game before. Yeah, I've actually seen some people. Some people are scared that they're going to play scared, so they go the opposite way. You know what I mean? Like they move up a level, they go, okay, I can't play scared poker. I can't play scared poker, so instead I'll start playing it right. this kind of way. And there you go, he folds. Tony takes it down. And he shows the ace. There you go. Take it down, Tony. Lines close. And I think when you when you said Gus was coming to the table on C8, everybody thought it was Gus Hansen. Right. Getting really excited. Right, right. And <laughs> Gus actually, he, he does not, I don't know, he actually lives, where does he live, Gus Hansen? Uh, Denmark, right? Isn't he Danish? I know he's Danish. Does he live in, in, L, in L, I mean, Vegas uh, now? Or? I don't know. I don't know. I, mean, I know he travels a lot, obviously, he travels on the poker circuit, playing a lot of tournaments. Action Joe has got big slicks off suit there in the big blind in seat five. Tony's going to limp. Raise 200. And Joe's going to raise it up here to 200 with Ace King. And he's just trying to take it down right now. And I think he, well, I never know. I don't want to say what I think. Yeah, 200 is one of those things where even Ed and Tony get away from it. Um, that's interesting, obviously. Now, that one hand where, where Barry yeah, has 5 6 suited, but he doesn't want to play that out of position. And, and Joe's really deep, and so is Matthew, so he was thinking about it. Yeah, you know what? Heads up, 6-5 suited for $200. Yeah. That's an awful lot of money for a speculative hand. Yeah. Um, especially out of position. Now, the one thing that's interesting here, the one hand there where, where Ed had 6-4, had bottom two pair, you know, bottom two pair is very vulnerable. You know, even if even if um, Barry doesn't make his two pair on the turn, obviously there are a lot of cards that can kill your two pair. Well, even if it's a blank on the turn, he can pair the blank on the river. Exactly. So... Pair the blank on the river, obviously pair whatever Barry has in his hand, yeah, or pair the ace. Right, right. Four players. Four-way action here, limped around. Queen five jack here with a couple of spades. Oh, well, Barry's open-ended here. Ed's got a flush draw. Barry's going to bet right into the open end. 70. He's going to bet 70. Well, you would think that Ed's probably going to call here at least. I would imagine. He's going to call. It usually doesn't raise with draws. Yeah. It's one thing I've noticed. How about the king of spades here on the turn? Well, the turn's an eight. 
And that gives Barry the straight. Yeah, but it gives Ed a pair. Ed, Ed can get in real trouble now. 200. Barry's going to bet 200. And Ed's going to call. Yep, and Ed, needs a, Ed basically needs a spade and only a spade. And the river's a five. That's not going to do it. Well, now it's one of those things, that if you had the spade draw, what can you beat? Well, Barry bets 500 now. Right, well, think about it, though. What can you beat if you have some big bet here? I guess you could beat King 10. And Ed pays him off, Dave, with a pair of eights. Wow. And I was about to say, wow. with a pair of eights, what can you beat? Think about it. You have the spade draw, so the odds of him having a spade draw are pretty slim, right? You can't beat a five anymore. You can't beat a queen. You can't beat a jack. What are you beating? I mean, I guess you can beat, like you said, King 10. Right. That's it. Unbelievable stuff. <laughs> wow. Oh, there's the girlfriend, Dave. Of that gentleman. Oh, we're missing her. There she is. We were talking way before in the beginning of the show. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, um, if we remember, Tyler lost about five, four thousand dollars, so she might be pissed off. So maybe she's, uh, you know, maybe I can go out and swoop her out. She's right for the pick in there, Bart. If I go home and I lost four or five thousand dollars, you'd be out. You'd, your wife would boot you out to the street. Oh, I, I'd be out on the street. <laughs> Five-way action here. Nine, three, four, rainbow, limped around. And I think queen four is still the best hand, right? Yeah, Barry still has the best hand here, the queen four. He's, he's going to bet. bet. Yeah, yeah he bets 100 here. I mean, that's the reason I, I mean, in some ways I do like Barry's game because it's like you don't really know. I mean, he could, he could be betting to a pair. He could be betting a set. He also could be betting just a four. He doesn't need the nuts to bet. Well, Ed's open-ended now. And, boy, you know, you'd love to see Ed actually raise a hand here on a yeah. draw. Yeah, Matthew's also open-ended here. And this is a perfect spot for Matthew or Ed to raise. Ed calls. You kind of know, you got to figure neither one of these players oh. is very strong. Matthew, Matthew's not going to chase. Obviously, the implied odds just aren't there with this type of... And look at that, the straight comes, but, you know, is Ed going to get paid off here? Well, you never know. Barry's well, called Barry's going to bet again. He's going to bet 200, and Ed immediately raises, and, and Barry should know. Yeah, and Barry quickly folds. Well, I mean, we've seen Barry call with less. Right. So you never know. Right. Well, get bad credit for throwing it away there. Now, it's interesting. If Matthew had a hand like 5-7 there, that might have been Good worth chasing. Man. Right. Especially if you thought maybe, hey, there's a chance that Ed might have a 5. Because if that 6 came, you could have had all of Ed's chips. Exactly. On the river. Mm -hmm. We were talking about a small pot that was only four or 500 bucks, But you literally could have moved all in for 5,000 and Ed probably would have called with a 5, right? Right. No, you're, you're 100 Yeah, you know. Ace Jack here for Action Joe win, but Barry's got pocket nines. So he's going to raise it up from the button. He makes it 150 to go. And wait a minute, are we going to get a re raise here? Oh, it's just 130. Okay, I thought Brian said that somebody re-raised, but apparently not. Yeah, Ed's got a call with yeah, seven nine of seven. Yeah, getting calls in a bunch of spot here. Allen did not call, obviously. No. And is Joe going to call with Ace Jack out of position? Ace Jack out oh. off suit is a pretty uh, easily dominated hand. And he and he says he wants to show to Mo that he's laying that hand down preflop. Like what? Like it's such a big lay down. <laughs> Six, seven, three. Uh oh, Ed's got top pair and Barry has an over pair, and this could be big. Oh, these two guys have been going at it all night long, huh? Two hundred dollar bet here by Barry, and Ed calls the turns to queen. Joe is out of the hand. Ed checks. Barry's gonna bet. That's four hundred. And again, look at Ed just call, Dave. And the river is a five. Anyone with a four would have a straight. Oh, Ed's not gonna bluff now. Ed checks. And Barry's not going to make a value bet here. Yeah, you know, the queen kind of killed a little bit of the action. And in the five, obviously, even more so. If Ed bets the river there with a four, can Barry call? Oh, well, it depends how much he bets, yeah. It's a tough call if he bets a lot. It's one of those uh, soul-searching type 
you know, situations that Barry Woods often gets put to the test on the river here at Live at the Bike. Yeah. Soul searching, right? Definitely. He, yeah. he searches and he usually finds the right one. <laughs> finds the right answer. Yeah, he finds the right answer. Usually. And, and Barry and Ed, I mean, they've been going at it all night long. This guy should get a room. And uh, Zero Send on 2 Plus 2 actually asked, he wanted to know if we ever show any mixed games, because I had talked about it. And um, what do you have to say about that? Well, we, we, we did way back when, Dave, but, uh, but our, you know, our cameras are really only equipped to have two cards. And you can't pick up cards that are open, meaning up cards, just yeah. like the ESPN can't do it with studs. They, they have it in the graphics, and we obviously just can't do that. Yeah, it just, yeah, it just doesn't work. Pocket Queens over here for seat seven. Ooh, and that's a new player. 140 more. Wait, I don't know his name. And I think his name is Mike, and he's raised it here. 140. We haven't seen him play a hand. Alan's going to call pocket fours. Ed's in there with ace 10 off suit. And Joe's in there. So five way, four way action times 140. It's about a $550 pot. Here we go to the flop. Eight deuce deuce, pretty good flop for pocket queens. Yeah, but Joe's got top pair here. He's gonna get himself in trouble. Actually, it's it's not a bad flop for pocket fours either. To be no. honest with you. Again, the pot's about five fifty, and Mike's 500. gonna bet five hundred, about the size of the pot. Ed's got ace ten. Can he make the call? <laughs> well, I mean, it, to be honest with you, the only hand that's not a good flop for is ace ten. Right. Um, and he gets away from it. But it's not a bad flop for Allen here at Pocket Force. Now Allen's not going to get involved. And let's see what Joe does. Joe going to do a little check raise here, you think? Well, oh. that, should be a, that should be a sign from God yeah. there. Sign. Do not put your chips in there, buddy. I got, I got three on the floor. Wait, you got one here. And uh, he spilled three white chips on the floor, Dave. We always find it funny when people are searching around for blue chips, which are a dollar <laughs> right, chip. Right, well, right. White chips are different, obviously. We've seen people do that, actually. They'll be in the middle of like a $7,000 pot, right. and they'll be searching around for one dollar chip. <laughs> and you're like, come on, buddy. Focus on the uh, task at hand. Well, Joe's just going to call. And he continues to search for chips. And what do you think he has if he's called the flop here? Turns a five. He picks up a heart draw now, too. Yeah. Okay. And he goes, check, check. How do you check that? And the river's a king. Well, this is interesting here. You think... You think it's just going to get checked down. No, they just check it down. What? Come on, Mike. I, mean, I think I Mike was really scared that Joe might have a deuce. Uh, yeah, and yeah. Joe's going to check it three times to me? Yeah, Mike, Mike normally plays the 3-5 to five game or the $200 game, and he's new to this game and obviously a little passive, but there's no way Joe checks the deuce three times. Sorry, I don't buy it. And i got to tell you, by Mike checking the turn, he might even get paid off on the river. Oh, look at this, another chip count. Barry Woods there, 13,400. Unbelievable stuff. Yeah, really. Joe Wynn's gone down a little bit there, and uh, Matthew's up a little bit, and Mo really hasn't done anything, and Ed actually isn't, I think Ed might only be down five or 6,000 tonight. You know what's interesting about Barry here? You know, he faces continual criticism from people on 2 Plus 2. Once in a while, you criticize him. Once in a while, I criticize him. And night after night after night, he's usually winning. Now, obviously, I know he had a bad night on Wednesday in our whale game. But in the majority of the time, he wins. I mean, if you look over the last eight months of archives, he's a big winner. Yeah, we've got some actually pretty big hands here, but nobody raised pre-flop. And the flop comes out 10, 7, deuce. Well, this is interesting here because Moe's got ace 10, but Barry Woods has king 10. And Barry has bet 120 here. And Mo, he's got ace 10 from up front. He checked it from up front. So is he going to check raise? And Gus has got pocket eights. Yeah. Now, i got to tell you, with all those players in there, pocket eights, I throw them away. I mean, there's six-handed here. How did Gus not raise with pocket eights in the button? He didn't. He just limped in. Wow, okay. I mean, it's a way to play. Tony's obviously. got an open-ended straight draw with backdoor spades in seat nine. So if all these people call in between, you got to think Mo's going to check raise here with ace 10, don't you think? I'd imagine. Well, the pot is limped around, so he doesn't even know if his hand's good. Now, i got to tell you, the way Gus has played this hand. Look at this. Gus uh, calls. Man. Tony calls. Let's see what Mo's going to do. He's going to raise. Yeah, I hope so. He's going to make a nice raise here. 
Wow, 500, 500 more. 500 more. And I got to tell you, you got to give Mo a little respect here because yeah. he has not played many hands all night long. Yeah. He's the, probably got a pretty big hand here. Dave, the pot's about $1,200, 500 to call. And I don't know if Barry can get away from this. Yeah, but if I'm Barry, you got to look at this hand and go, you know what? Is Mo doing this with a hand worse than King 10? I mean, is he, do, is he making this play with Jack 10 or Queen 10? Well, he's going to make the call. Wow. $1,500 pot, Gus leaves, and Tony's probably going to call in his draw. Well, now, I mean, it's not a bad call by Tony. Tony's going drawn to the nuts. $2,000 pot. Here we go to the turn. The turn is a nine. Doesn't well, that, really help anybody. Well, it gives Tony a pair now. Tony's got more outs. It gets checked to Mo, and he's going to bet 1000 into a $2,000 pot. Well, and Tony might call this. Well, let's say Barry might even call. A th it's a $3,000 pot, 1000 to call. And Mo still is in the lead with a single pair. He's got ace-10. <laughs> I mean, you got to look at it and go, what kind of draw would he have except 8-9? But I don't think Mo is going to check-raise three people with 8-9, do you? I just don't buy it. I mean, to me, he's got a made hand. He might even have a set. I mean, if you're Barry, you could be drawing dead here. It's a thousand to call. Three thousand dollar pot. I mean, come on, an uncoordinated board like that. And the funny thing, if Barry makes the call and then Tony makes the call, Tony can catch a jack, a six, an eight, or a nine to win. He's yeah. got a lot of outs. Tony's actually got a legitimate hand. Actually, Tony right. has not only a calling hand. I mean, t Tony can definitely call his hand. Right, right. Because it's one thousand to win a three thousand dollar pot, right? right. So and now it's 1000 to win a $4,000 pot. He's getting, and Tony calls. Well, Tony's getting four to win on his money. $5,000 pot. And what do you think that Mo's thinking over there with Ace-10? He's got to dodge a lot of cards. Oh, yeah. Here we go to the river. It's a six, and Tony's got the straight. Tony's got, and he moves And he's going to move all in, but he doesn't have much more money left. No, and I, I imagine Mo is going to call this. I don't think Mo can get away from this hand here. Well, how much is the bet? I mean, the pot's so big. Yeah, I mean... The funny thing is, it's a one-liner to a straight. Yeah. But you know what? The pot is five thousand dollars. It's like five hundred to call. And Tony's gonna bet five seventy. Yeah. Yeah. Mo calls. Yeah. You can't blame Mo for this. And, and Barry can't overcall, even if it's five seventy. Well, how can you overcall here well, if you're five, Barry Woods? Well, you gotta look at it. It's five seventy to win about sixty-two hundred dollars. But still, you know that your hand can't be good. You're getting paid 13 to 1 on it. All you got to be right is 1 out of 13 wow. times to make this profitable. No calls. Just, just throwing at you. Let's see what Barry does. I mean, it's a lot. And Barry folds. He okay. folds. Yeah, Tony's going to take it down there with the straight. And, and you know what? Mo and lost, I mean, Mo lost probably $2,000 on that. Hand. And I can't fault the way Mo played the hand. I think he played it really well. He just got unlucky there. And I got to tell you, I can't fault the way Tony played the hand either. He was open-ended on a rainbow board. Yeah. Then he catches a pair, plus open-ended, and then he gets there. Um, the only person that I really question is Barry there. With King-10, you got to get away from that hand a little bit. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I think he knows that. When he watches it, he'll see it. And I gotta tell you, the table's gonna be happy that Tony won that money and not Mo. Sounds like I hear uh, Corporation Mike in the background. There he is. He and his shiny head. This time I think he shaved. Before, like he hadn't shaved in a while. Got that goatee look going on and the. Shiny bald head. I wish I could pull that off. I mean, I think if I shaved my head bald, like totally bald like that, I would look like an idiot. He pulls it off well, though. Now we got a raise here. I think it's by Tony. And we have, and let's play this hand in the dark. Young one on two plus two set. Well, you know what? We, we can't really do this with Tony. <laughs> Guys said, you should play along like they do in celebrity poker. Pick one player like Barry Woods and show only his cards. Then you guys can commentate on what Barry would do, or sometimes we play a player in the dark. But it's very difficult for David and I to say, no, what Tony has in his hand, right? I, I mean, it would be I impossible. I don't think God knows what Tony has. Right. I mean, come on. But Tony, I think, did raise pre-flop. Well, if he continues with the betting, he might take this down. Well, Ed's got overcards oh. and a flush draw on I'm C2. Sorry. Wrong. And it looks like it's checking around. Well, it's going to get checked to Tony, but he's on the button. Let's see what he does. He's going to bet. Now he raised it pre-flop. Oh, here's the button. I think yeah. here's the button. Oh. Looks like he's making it $180. $180. And again, we don't know what he has. 
What do you think he has? Ed's going to call. I have no idea. How about Ed East Jack? Call Ed calls. You're going to call East Jack? Jack? East Jack off. I've got to be honest with you. We cannot see it yet. Well, now they're going to. I'm going to guess Ace Jack. Oh, well, wow. It looks like it's. You know, look like he's got, he's got King Jack. Or what? It, no. Oh, no, it's King Pocket Kings. Kings. Pocket Kings. Well, not quite. But that's, that's the thing with Tony. You really yeah. don't know. I mean, he could have King King there. He could have King Jack there. He could have right. Ace Jack there. Who the hell knows? The problem here for Ed is if a nine comes off here on the turn, or how about a king? He's really screwed. Case king or a nine comes? Well, it's one of those times where Ed's got over cards right. and a flush draw. But the thing is, if a heart comes, can Tony get away from it? Turns I don't, I don't think so. Gus is out of the hand. Now, it's a good Ed time checks. for a little blocker bet there, but he doesn't put it in. A little stop bet there, huh? Like a $200 stop bet, maybe? Well, Tony's the only going to bet 200 <laughs> Okay, so there you stop go. Stop bet yourself. <laughs> and Ed quickly calls. And the river's a nine. Now, the fours might slow. Oh, well. I was going to say the fours might have slowed down. Ed checks. Tony bets 300 That's a kind of a small little bet there, huh? Yeah, and Ed's going to call. Pocket kings are good. Tony's yeah. on quite a little rush there. He's got 6,000 in front of him now. Yep. That's one thing with these kind of players, when they play a lot of hands, if they get lucky and the, the deck starts hitting them in the face, they can make a lot of money real quick. Yep. I mean, sometimes you hear about somebody's great night, like, you know, Corporation Mike would say, oh, yeah, I won $26,000. You know, real good players like a, like a Tommy Huffnagel or even like, a, you know, you, it's rare that you're going to win that much just because you're not playing that many hands. Yeah. I mean, I told you I had one of the worst days I've ever had today, and I, well, and I actually quickly won about 800 back, but I was down about, geez, at one point, Dave, I was down between the 20 and the 30 game in three hours, about $2,300. Well, wow, yeah, that's okay. And, it, you know. Well, that 30 game, especially, you know, the 30 uh, game, you know, a rack is obviously $1,000. Yeah. And you can easily lose a rack very quickly in that game. Yeah. So I ended, only ended up down about $1,400 for the day. Five it's okay. It's all one long session. Now, you've had days like that, haven't you? Never. Never. <laughs> I win every day. <laughs> eight, five, seven here. Joe's got ace, eight suited in seat five. He's got top pair. Obviously, any professional poker player has to deal with winning and losing and the psychology that goes to that all. 220. Joe's going to bet 220 here. He bet 220. And Tony is going to make the call here with middle pair. And I want to make a comment about, say, running bad in one session. Because a lot of people say you should always play the same no matter what. But specifically in limit hold'em, I almost have to disagree with that a little bit. Now, here we're going to go. Somebody call. Oh, uh, yeah, Tony's Tony call. Here. Well, Tony's on a rush. He, he, you're not going to get him out of any pot He's got now. middle pair. He'll Joe probably catch a three right now. Joe bet with ace eight. Tony called. Maybe Joe will catch an ace, and then Tony will catch a seven. I don't know. Turns a jack. Joe's going to bet again. And this is where you got to keep betting. You bet your va you value bet, and you value bet. Now, Joe was the type of player he would bet like a six. He would bet his open end the straight draw. But Tony gets rid of it. Yeah. And uh, Joe falls. Or Joe, Joe takes it down. I just want to remind you all at home, tomorrow's tournament, December 10th, Saturday, starts at 4.15 p.m., and it is a No Limit Hold'em uh, $200 tournament with multiple rebuys, $100,000 guaranteed tournament tomorrow. Um, and, the, and for every person who enters the tournament, you get a free poker pads thing here. It's a bicycle casino, poker pads. Check it out. Pretty cool. If you play Internet poker, you can uh, use it as a mouse pad, obviously. Practice shuffling your chips on it. Yeah, you Very can also cool. check out poker pads on our website. Yeah. Click on the link. And Very what cool. I was saying, Dave, about running bad is that I will actually tend to lay back more if I'm running bad in a session. Like, say I've lost every single pot, Dave, in the session. I just can't hit a thing. Well, sometimes then I'm not going to continue to bet with my pre-flop races with ace, king, and ace, queen, and if rag comes out to, like, say, four or five people where I might do that from running well and I'm winning and people are respecting me. Because people are just going to call me down always. Right. Well, so to say that you're always going to play the same all the time, regardless of what your image is, I think is is really not 100% correct. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, and I, I want to get to that point in a second, because you're, you're 100% right. Right. And people might not understand it. I, I want to throw yeah, that at you. Yeah. 
four-way action here. Queen, Jack, Queen. Well, and seat eight there. Yeah. Yeah. Gus has got trips, huh? Yeah. And he checked it. Surprise, it's not surprise. like that board isn't coordinated. Look at this. The third spade comes out. And he does not have a spade. Barry checks. And now Gus is going to bet. And I don't think that anybody can call. 120. And I just want to quickly point out that Aaron Woods, Barry Woods' daughter, emailed us. And he said, yay. She says, yay from my dad. He is so great. There you go. Hey, Barry is pretty cool. But so anyways, what were you saying about that session? Okay, I was just going to point out something there. And look, there's Barry. And this is like like pro Barry day, jeez. Right, right. I'm getting sick. Anyway, um, what I was going to say was, some people are saying, some people would say, wait a second, though, if if how you're running affects the way you play, that's pretty dumb. You should always play, you know, aggressive, right. smart, tight poker. Right. The fact of the matter is, though, you do have to pay attention to the, what your table image is. Yes, that's and what I'm talking about. Like, table image. You have to sometimes you have to sit down at a table and go, yeah. how do the people, how do my opponents view me? Right. You know, and that doesn't. And actually, you know, for a lot of the, our people that that play internet poker, Dave, it does. Table image really doesn't necessarily apply. I mean, it does somewhat in internet, but nowhere near as much as it does in pros. When you're multi-tabling, when people don't really aren't paying attention, right. you know what Limp, I mean? Yeah, limped around here four yeah. ways, eighty dollar pot, queen nine four, rainbow. Uh, nobody has a queen here, but uh, seat three, Matthew's got a nine, and I think he's going to bet it and take it down. He bets 100, and I think he's going to take it down. And yeah. what I mean by that internet thing is it would be stupid to say, all right, I'm running really bad in internet poker, but I'm going to switch tables, and now I'm going to change my game up. No, that doesn't work. You're at a different table. Right. You know right. what I mean? You should. You really should play the same on the internet pr pretty much, I would say, yeah. all the time. I mean, to you me, know? actually, a lot of times if I'm running, like I, I, one of my general rules is I will never bluff Unle until I have won one hand. <laughs> right. Because I want to show a winning hand down right. before I bluff the first time. Right. Uh, another rule of mine is I, I like to, if, I, if my image, if I'm running bad and it looks like people are getting the best of me, I'll often try to, and obviously we're props, so sometimes it's hard for us to get up, I'll often try to move to a different table. Right. $60 um, raise here by Tony with Ace Jack. Matt's going to call over there and see through 7 5 suited. I mean, it's really important, obviously, to, to know how the, your opponents see you. Because obviously, if they see you as a tight rock, or they see you as some sort of loose, you know, aggressive player, you know, it'll affect the way you play. 8-5-3 here. Well, Matthew's got middle pair. Is Tony going to make a continuation bet here with Ace-Jack? No, he checks. Let's see if Matthew's going to come out and bet. He's going to bet. I'm going to tell you, I like Matthew's game. He knows how to get away from a hand, but doesn't necessarily need the nuts to pet. <laughs> Matthew bets 160 here. Got only about 15, 20 minutes left in our webcast. And he's going to take it down there. 20 folds. Whereas if my table image is really good and I'm really hot and people see me winning, I'm more likely to drive with hands and possibly make moves. You know what I mean? It, it's, yeah, 100%. It's different. Um, and I am kind of more speaking on terms of uh, of limit hold'em, where the action moves a lot faster. Obviously, when you're involved with more. Yeah, it The same thing happens in no limit too. Yeah. I mean, you look at it like a, a guy like Corporation Mike. You know, if he were to change gears suddenly, right. you know, it would be really effective once in a while because everybody considers him, you know, really aggressive. He's the kind of guy who's going to make moves. He's in there with any two cards which is one of the reasons why he gets paid off. You know, or a player like Allen, the reason his check raise before with only second pair was so effective was because you go, okay, if Allen's check raising me, he's got to have two pair or better. Right. If everyone falls to you, then it becomes a lot. I mean, we've seen Dr. Beebe make moves on Corporation Mike, and Corporation Mike threw away top pair because it was Dr. Beebe. I think that Mo, no, excuse me, it got, it got flopped. Uh, limped around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's Three a flush action. for Joe Wynn. And Joe Wynn's got a flush. Ace, five, deuce. But the pot was limped around. Look what he's up against here. Not much. Well, Tony's got a pair. <laughs> and Joe's going to bet here. He bets 100. Tony can't call here with eight deuce, can he? No. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, that's one of those times where... 
I really actually like a bet, even if the pot's been limped around and it's ace, deuce, five. Because you've got jack seven of diamonds. I mean, I mean, you're up against Tony and against Gus. Are those guys likely to make a play there on the turn to try to take it away? I just... Sometimes you almost you can get yourself into trouble there. I had this uh, now Barry's. You can take a look at the chip count there. So Tony's up to seven thousand dollars. What did he start with? Like like two thousand? He's up like five grand. Yeah, rock and roll, Tony. That's right. And Barry's up. So we're trying to see who's the big winner. Is it Tony or Barry? We'll get that information. Too. Yeah. Tony actually started with a thousand. So Tony he's up looks to like our big 6, winner. Six thousand. Wow. So I put him up still. Later I come up and stick my tongue in Four players. Jack 7-10 here on the flop. The seven, that's the only way got checked around. The turn's another jack. Doesn't look like anyone has much of anything here. Matthew's got pocket sixes. Tony's going to come out and bet with king seven. And it looks like he's going to take it down. Yeah, he has the best hand. hand. How old do you think Aaron Woods is? I have no idea. No. I know Barry I, Woods' I, son play. I, I, I don't know if I want to go there. Because, no. you know, Barry's right at that age where his daughter could be like 21, 22, Dave. Don't go there. <laughs> anyway, I know Barry Woods' <laughs> son actually teaches snowboarding. In uh, I want to say Aspen or Vale or one of those places, which is actually obviously really cool. Let me give you. I'm actually dying. Well, actually, so. Barry's like I think he's like 40 or 45 or something. I don't know how old he is, but again, I still think that his daughter's at that magical age. Look at Ray. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Barry. Once again, live debate, politically incorrect. I take no credit for what Bart ever said. <laughs> The hey, you know, I was going to say, what was on the flop? limped what around here. Yeah. King 5 3. King 5 3. Tony's got open ended straight draw here. Look at Mo there. Mo's had a tough night, but he's still smiling. Good for him. Really a class act. Now we had a bet there. $80 by Tony. He's an open ended straight draw, and he takes it down. Ed just said, make sure you give Barry bad shrimp, Dave. <laughs> well, Barry, and, I mean, let's say Ed and Barry have been going at it all night. Yep. <laughs> you know, getting the best of them back and forth. Yeah, Ed, a little grilled corn on the cob. Oh, I love that grilled corn. Put a little salt on there. There it is. Roll that in that butter, Ed. The funny thing about corn, like, Dave, you know I try to eat healthy. I actually... Don't put butter on my corn in the cob anymore. I just load it with salt. <laughs> it's, it's just as good, I think. Right. Yeah. Okay. You also can eat corn on the cob raw without cooking it. I like the barbecue mine. I throw mine on the grill, yeah. to be honest, at home. You, you like to really grill, good. huh? Yeah, I, I love I, I First first thing I did when we bought our house, actually, at Burbank, first thing we did was buy a barbecue for it, and I love it. Six-way action limped around. Look, Allen did not raise with ace-king. The flop comes ten-deuce-five with a couple of hearts. Barry's got a pair and a flush draw. Yeah, Moe's got top pair here. Let's see if Barry's going to bet here with four or five of hearts. Probably. And he is. And let's see what Moe does. 120. Barry bets 120. Well, is Moe going to check raise here? Well, Moe's on the button. Is he? He doesn't have to so check he's raise in then. position. And usually Moe will raise with top pair. I'd imagine he will here. And there you go. One thing great about Moe's game, I'll tell you this, is if he gets a bad beat, yeah. you know, gets a tough suck out, he doesn't change up his game. You well, know, he, he still stays with it. He still stays aggressive. Mo raises it up to 500. Now, the interesting thing for Barry here is I've never necessarily seen him make a move like this, but he could actually re-raise big here with his hand. Yeah, he's got a big and enough hand. I don't know if Mo with a single, I mean, Mo just raised. Remember, Mo likes to slow play big hands too, so he's not necessarily playing 10-5 or 10 deuce. And if he had a set... I don't necessarily think he would raise here. Oh, Mo, draw, if Barry pushed here, do you think Mo could call with King Ten? Yeah, I mean yeah. it would be a really tough call. I mean you got to yeah. look at Barry, and and Barry's got. I mean, Barry actually, if Barry did push, it wouldn't be a terrible place for Mo to call because Barry's got, I want to say five. Barry's got nine, uh, fourteen outs. 
Well, I mean, the, any five, any four, and any heart. I mean, I like Mo's games, but sometimes Mo's game in the last few months has become a little bit predictable, and I always get on him for slow playing big hands. Like, I don't think he would raise with pocket fives or pocket deuces here. So right. what do you put him on? I say I put him on a 10 with a high kicker. The problem is, though, is what you know and what Barry knows are different things. You know, we know he doesn't do that with trips, right? Not you, but does Mo, I mean, how many times does Mo show that game? Well, Barry watches the archives. I mean, give, I, before, actually, Mo had a set, and he did bet right into Joe. Remember that? And Barry just calls. Barry just calls. So we're going to go to the turn here. The turn's a nine. No help. And the best card, actually, Barry, for Barry to get, actually, would be a five or a four, not a heart. But Barry's going to bet again. He's going to put a little blocker bet in there. Yeah, it looks like it. It looks like he bets 500. And, and Mo's not going to buy it. He's going to move the rest of his chips all yep. in. He smelled the blocker bet. It didn't work. And I th let's see how much more it is here. And we're, it's a math problem here for Barry with one card to come. Yeah. It's 630 more. Barry bet 500 here <laughs> on the turn. Now, the pot before this street, Dave, I want to say it was about 1,200. Barry bet 600, 1,800. Mo calls and it's raises. 24. It's about a $3,000 pot, 630 for Barry to call. Yeah, you get about 4 to 1 on his money, right? So he's got nine flush outs, two fives, and, and maybe two fours. So that's... Well, he doesn't know. I mean, that, Mo could have 10-9, yeah. so you don't know exactly but what it, he... But if you put him on 10 with a big kicker, nine flush outs, two fives, and three fours, that's 14? 14 outs. He, he, one he knows about 44 cards. So he, he, he has got about one chance in a little over three. He needs about two to two and a half to one to make this call. I think the pot's laying him correct odds. Yeah. If he puts him on a single 10. Well, by putting 600 in there, he's kind of priced himself into the pot. Right. In for a dime, in for a dollar. I think he has the call. Yeah, and he's going to make the call. If he puts him on just one single pair, obviously. So Barry could catch a five, a four, or a heart here. Yep. I know it's good for you. And I don't know. We might actually see them run it multiple times. And they're going to run it three times here, Dave. First time's a 10. Mo wins that time. Yeah. Three. Mo wins that time. And Mo wins them all three, Dave. Yep. There you go. Mo's got it all. And obviously, if you're interested in what running it three times is, just go to liveatthebike.com, and uh, we have it fully explained there. Yeah, check it out. <laughs> We're finally smarting up here. We actually, we used to explain it every single time they would run it. Um, so instead, we now we just actually post it on liveatthebike.com. So if you're curious of what just happened, just go to the site and you can check it out. Moved over here to seat two. <laughs> We've got five way action here, limped around. Queen four five here with a couple hearts. Looks like Matt's got a weak queen over there in the blind in seat three. And it gets checked around the turns of three. Third hard out there. And Matt's going to put a little bet in now. Kind of a little feeler bet, see where he's at. He's going to bet 130. See if he can take it down right here and now. See Barry's got a jack high flush draw. But yep. I mean, do you really want to chase this? You have no idea if it's good. Exactly. And that's the reason you can't call this. Yeah. There's no implied odds, and he folds. There's actually the only thing you really have is reverse implied odds, huh? Right. When you say, if you hit it and my hand isn't good, how much can I lose? Exactly. And hey, look at that. Ed folds, uh, got shot straight draw. And you see Ed and Barry kind of poking fun at each other. I think uh, Barry told Ed to choke on his corn <laughs> after the shrimp comment. <laughs> These guys are like grumpy old men, you know? Walter Matthau and Jack Lemon. Oh, that's so funny, Dave. <laughs> Button's going to move over here to seat three. He's up, he's up, he's up. Tony's got an interesting hand here. Tony's got 10-9 suited. And uh, seat three, Matthew's got king-queen off suit, but he's on the button. Let's see what he does. Well, Gus is going to raise it to 70 with queen-10 off suit. Oh, really odd. I mean, he's almost playing it more aggressive in this game than he would in the smaller games. 
And Joe's got the ace queen offsuit in the blind. He calls, and we're going to see four way action. $280 pot. Gus is the raiser. I mean, Gus doesn't raise with, with pocket eights, but he raises with queen ten. Look at this. Matthew called the raise with king queen. He's hit top pair. Now he's okay. He might not know he's okay, but he is okay. Now I don't like calling raises with king queen out of, out of position, but he is in position, which makes it a little bit better. Let's see if Gus makes a continuation bet here. He's going to bet 240. And let's see how Matthew plays Dave. That's a pretty we, small Well, Sometimes small we talk about a call in position is sometimes as good as a raise. I'd like to see what Matthew does I here. I think he can call here. Just a smooth call. Obviously, he's got two options, a call or a raise. And, and it looked like he just called. Yeah. Turns an ace of diamonds. Boy, is that a horrible card for an offshoot uh, king-queen. Let's see if Gus uses it. Now, the problem is, once again, Matthew's in position. Being out of position with queen-10, ugh. I think Matthew checked, and now, excuse me, Gus checked, and now Matthew's going to bet. And to be honest with you, if Gus had bet strong here, Matthew can't call. Yeah. I mean, with a king-queen there, no way. Gus has got nothing, though. What's he even waiting for? It's just Hollywooding it up, I guess, huh? And the thing I don't understand about Gus's game here, he's on the button with pocket eights, and he limps in. And then he's out of position with queen 10 off suit, and he raises it up. I mean... <laughs> and look at this. You put it out there, and, and Diane Woods... Barry's wife. I assume. Yeah. For your information, Aaron is 21, I, I it. beautiful, and taken. Oh, taken. Taken, Jamaican. Come on, what are you talking about? She's probably not Asian. I'm not 100% sure. I don't I know. know. Maybe Barry's wife is Asian. I have no idea if Diane Woods is Asian or not, but I'm assuming she yeah, might yeah, not be. Yeah, Barry Wu instead of Barry Woods. <laughs> He's jack off suit here in seat six. <laughs> Uh-oh, Barry's going to kill me after the show once he hears about it. He should, yeah. I mean, he comes in here with a nice Christmas, you know, nice Christmas gifts for you. Pocket Queen's here for uh, Joe Wynn. He's in the blind. And uh, I think he raised it up to 200. And Barry's got Ace Jack off suit. He calls. Hey, he's in position, I think. Yeah, he is in position, but... It can be tough. And Ed called with Queen 3 off suit. Well, he's got three Queens. I mean, Queen 3. Oh, eight, two, seven. Pretty good flop for Joe here. Yeah, and Joe's got the queen of clubs, too, just in case running comes to running clubs. And Joe's not going to mess around. He's going to keep betting. And this, the hand should end right here, I assume. Okay. This hand is going to be the last hand of the night, Dave. Yeah, one more hand, huh? Yep, Joe Wynn's going to have the uh, button here in seat five. So, thank you all for joining us. Yeah, once again, live at the bike. Join us every Monday through Friday from 6 to 9. Yep. So one more hand left here. And again, Tony's the big winner over there in seat nine. I think he's up from the table right now. You want to get 5% tomorrow? Well, Barry and Tony were both up pretty big, but Barry lost that big pot also. He lost when he had the king 10. Pot has limped around here five ways. King 10, 10 here. No, I got it back. No, no, nobody's got a 10. But seat four. four. Yeah. Alan's got a weak king. Yeah. He's going to bet. At least he bets in position here, Dave. He bets 100. Good for him. Doesn't. I can't imagine that anyone's going to call here. No, I don't think so. I, I $50. That should do it, huh? That is going to do it for us tonight. There it is. Alan takes down the last pot of the night. Another week of live at the Another bike done. Another week huh? of live at the bike done. Now remember, the week after Christmas, which is coming up in two weeks, we will be dark and we'll be playing some sort of best of live at the bike. But again, if you just caught the tail end of this episode tonight, well, hey, stick around for a couple more minutes because this show is going to repeat until 4 o'clock tomorrow. I have to come here again? Do it again? <laughs> As is every show. Oh, okay. As is every show that we repeat throughout the day until the next day, until 4 p.m. And of course, you can always watch all of our saved shows by clicking on the archives and checking the archives out. So for everyone here in the booth and for David Tuckman, I'm Bart Hansen. Good night, everybody, from Live at the Bike. Yeah, I don't have a pen. Sorry. It's here. It's big. And it's close.
closer than you think. It's not a tournament. It's what you don't see on TV. The cash is real. The stakes are high. They bet big. They win big. They lose big. High stakes live action poker. Live at the bike. Watch it live on the web. Or play it if you dare. At the Bicycle Casino right here in Los Angeles. Testing, testing. One, two. Testing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 